17th, calling the select board meeting to order. Uh, first agenda item, are there any additions or adjustments to the presented agenda? Two additions. Uh, one is Mr. Ryan Hoffman will be a recent dog situation from over the weekend um, and the presentation of an interlocal dog agreement. Uh, I just wanted to give it to you guys today, just came, but um, get it on your radar and start talking about it quickly because we need to do something based on the dog situation. Um, and then the second thing is uh, liquor licenses with a suggested motion. What are the liquor licenses? Is that one for uh, Marcellus? Mm -hmm. And Studio Sunday Five and Special. What's the suggested motion? First, was it standard? Um, I think it should be two separate motions. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that as item new six, I guess. The dog item would be new six again. Um, any other adjust additions or adjustments? None, I guess we'll continue. Uh, invoices and orders are going around. If we have questions, we can ask. Item number three is public comment. Is there any public comment of the public? We have a riveting group here tonight. Anybody's watching on YouTube? I'm getting nothing. Okay. Item number four, select board issues or concerns. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to talk about a uh, something that was put together by the Planning Commission, drafted 11 August 2021, amended and passed by the Planning Commission in September 2021. So, Johnson Water and Sewer Line Extension Connection Policy. And I don't know if it's ever been acted on. And that's why I'm asking the question. And everybody's got a copy of it. Yeah, we all have a copy in front of us. I'm not sure if it was ever signed. Um, I guess we could look into it. Is it something you'd like to do? Would any board members like to discuss it tonight or have it at our second meeting in July? What would the board like to do with it? I would just like, um, were you on the board then, Mike? Yes. Um, so you do you recollect it? No, I don't. I don't recollect uh, acting on it, to tell you the truth. And I was on something that could have slipped through the cracks or something. Well, I'm thinking. I was on the planning commission at the time, and I don't remember this being acted on by the select board. I see the planning commission is having having a meeting tomorrow. And I think it will be relevant at all for that part of the time. Well, I think. In some respects, it is relevant. Or it's one of relevant, whether they're in the yeah. Or... I have not had a chance to really study this or look at it, so I would certainly suspect that we should do this as a agenda item for a future board meeting. No uh, plan. What What's really unclear to me, and maybe maybe we can get it clarified. This is kind of policy. There is an order relative to connections within the town sewer service area. Very old. 77. 77? No, we're done right um, here. No. It, it was 1977. No. It was first time, though. Yeah, the ordinance that, that is in effect right now is much later than that. I was working. But there was one in 77, I think. Is that the one on the town website? I don't think so. Well, I don't think so. In, in any case, my point is there is there are two identified town sewer service areas. They're defined by setbacks from the road. Um, I'm not sure what effective policy would have on the ordinance. And if if we're talking about amending the ordinance, to me that's different than uh, adopting. Yeah. Well, yeah. And so I, I really I, don't want to have a policy that conflicts with the or I think that's good. Well, I don't have a clue why we can't react it. It's obvious the planning commission didn't like to work on this. And I don't know if maybe 
you know, the previous administrator didn't get it on the agenda or what? I do you have any idea what what the emphasis of the planning commission was? Maybe you do, sure. What the emphasis of the planning commission was to draft this document and submit to the board? Um, <laughs> the idea was to create kind of a, a very clear and, you know, in writing process for people who might want to get connected and also to um, establish an ability for the town to proactively identify areas that we, in this case, would want to get uh, connected. Um, and just again, to have that process kind of ready. Yeah. I think it's a good policy, whatever you want to follow. An amendment to the existing ordinance or whatever you want to call it. Well, I think it's in two pages. This really defines it quite well. Well, uh, to be very honest with you, there's been uh, an ongoing situation with somebody in the town for years uh, concerning uh, the so-called map that was uh, put out many years ago for the sewer area. Uh, there was some places in East Johnson, you know, that were allowed to hook into the village sewer. Uh, without getting into the weeds of you know talking for half an hour on that. Uh, there is a, an individual who still wants to hook in uh, to our sewer, uh, to the village's sewer, I should say. Uh, and I think that uh, the planning commission was charged, and I hope I'm not you know, overstepping, but trying to, and I think you touched on it a little bit, make something very clear on uh, if you could or you couldn't. Uh, so, and then I'm gonna digress back to uh, a meeting where Walter Pomerol spoke, and he said that the village wanted to get as many people as possible uh, into the wastewater treatment plant to generate more revenue, okay? So this is the vehicle, I believe, to generate revenue for the village and also satisfy some people in the town that would like to be on village sewer. So uh, this individual who was uh, wanted this sewer for many years reached out to me a while back and I told him that I was gonna look into it. Then I found this document uh, and it looks to me as if he can hook on to it. And so because it doesn't appear as if it was entered into policy, or entered into an amendment to a ordinance. I would like to see this happen so that individual can book into the so. Is that is that, have I been clear enough on that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. My only question would be how does it fall to us dealing with building sewer? I would think it would be more appropriate that this would be sitting in the still go to trustee. I understand this is the vision of the town and we can create policy, but it's really the village trustees that have the final say, right? I think the if, if I'm if I understand it correctly, it's that we have the ability to kind of define the areas that are included in the the special sewer area. So if if an area is kind of requested to be added to that, I think we are the ones that have to add to that, which the goal at, at the time of this was to try to take that out and, and to make it like a very clear, you know, if, if you can meet these criteria, you can get connected. Um, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I've just another reason we should be work. It's all. <laughs> um, do you have this document now? Yes. And can you just add this to the list um, for a plan? I think it's a good. Uh, work session um, item for sure uh, and then we've had the ordinance and everything compare but thank you for bringing that up yep. any other uh select board issues or concerns you're going to be a place for the stop it <laughs> Here's it. Okay. we're worried um, about yeah. heat you got yeah here. really right. um, so river road east the uh the complaint from the Eldred. Um, I'm going to keep bringing that up. I haven't heard anything. Um, do you have anything to report on that? Okay. 
I'm going to keep bringing it up because um, it is something in my mind that needs to be addressed. Um, dogs running loose. There was a complaint from um, Kim Marble about a couple of dogs on Stern Street that are breaking through and trying to get into her property running loose. Um, I know that was something I was CC'd on it. I guess it was a complaint because I didn't respond to the CC. I didn't think it was my, I, you know, I think it's an animal control issue. That's why I didn't respond. But I do hope that it's being followed up on anything to report on that. Um, I think that's relevant to the dog issue. Okay, and that was going to be one of my other issues was looking for an update, and it sounds like maybe you can give us an update on, you know, right now the dog was picked up. We don't have a okay. place to put it. Yeah. Um, so the kennel would be, you know, I think we need a short and long term plan, and maybe you've got it. Yeah. Um, really cool. Yeah. And the other thing I just wanted to let people know Vermont Legacy and Towns asked me if I would serve. Um, the Environmental Policy Committee, um, which is involved in setting municipal policy for both the legislature and municipalities, they are looking for a particular interest with the impacts of flood related stuff. Um, so I agreed to serve if anybody has any thoughts or ideas on influencing that VLCT environmental policy topics moving on. Now, the final thing I just want to update on um, the the speed um, radar control speed sign on the east end of the village um, still isn't looking any any news or anything no, on that this one. I talked about it. I think my memory and this is all months ago, right? Was that I needed to go have an electrician look at it, but it's kind of out of his hand. And I think the thought was that it might be in too shady of an area that the batteries are charging adequately. So just having it, I guess, can I have permission then to get Google Electric to look at it? Or is there electric? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like, you know, personally, it's out there. My understanding is there was a grant. Maybe the sheriff's department was involved helping us get some money for that. But I believe it's our responsibility to maintain it. And if it's out there, it should work. We might figure it out. We should remove it. Yep. Because I'd like to see it fixed, whatever it takes. Yeah. That all? I think so. Oh, the other thing that we that we had talked about relative to radar, um, uh, I I think in time for budget or budget discussions, you were going to give us some information on School Street. Yes, and possibilities of what it might cost. Do we have a specific request from somebody that we talked about it years ago? You, um, and that was conversations of fifteen thousand dollars a piece back then. So on school street number, that number stuck with me because I went huh Jason um Bill McLean, he's a building grounds for Mall North and South Met. And I think uh, to look, put that into a school zone, it's not a radar sign, but it would be flashing low lights timed with uh, the hours of pickup and drop off during the designated hours of the school zone. <laughs> Jason's pulling together the numbers for signs. I think preliminary, they're between 3,500 and 5,000, depending if they're hardwired or solar. And the school board will be discussing at their August meeting. They don't have a meeting in July. Um, to just give, once Jason follows up with the statutory process of creating a school zone, the school will then follow up with their portion so that we can move forward with budget um, But it looks like it might be up to $10,000 to solve the science of the school zone. Definitely. Yeah. Well, we know well, we know a better number. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I just don't want to lose track of it. It sounds like it's on, on top of radar. radar. I didn't dare say this. Uh, 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 but yeah, that's, you know, we do have a specific question. And people do speak on every road. They did, but that's another subject. But I'm going to go to school. So, certainly. 
Any other issues or concerns from the board? Um, I, I should ask Rosemary, do you, do you need a motion from the board tonight to um, approve paying the uh, invoice to the picnic table? It should be on here. Okay, will it in there? Oh, Phil's already be. Okay. Um, so we're good. Okay. Um, we're talking. We're talking about planned purchases now. I believe, unless the list has changed, the request is for one planned purchase for fencing material at Grove Cemetery for the board's purchase. Good question. No questions allowed. We we talked about at one point we talked about fencing two sides. Is is that what this proposal is? Uh this is I think just to do the front to meet the statutorial requirement um, to do a split rail until uh, there's a property owner adjacent um, to stuff to move around. Once that's done and finish the spot. Would it be split rail or I think that's the one where it sounds or yet to be determined. Yeah. Um, but with the boundary line agreement on those three sides, it's established. It's already been a pretty clear boundary. And our request was that's what's in the budget. It hasn't been spent yet. So my hope was that Jason could buy everything he needed for the fence before the end of this um fourth July first. And that way. So he won't be able to put it in probably until October, but at least the materials will be stored in the lower storage building. And then should any other event happen in a cemetery, we'll have to fund next year. So we have to worry about the budget. But it's just, I don't think it's going to cost 75 million per you know, 200 feet of split. Yeah, it's a, not to exceed. Yeah. So if, if we're talking about expending a lot and incurring a budget, I'm somewhat. That is at the moment about just spending it because it's in there. Because we do have, I guess it would really be nice to have some sense of what our final surplus is going to be because we've dedicated some money from a estimated or proposed surplus in our budget process. Yeah, I guess I'd like to have some idea of what how close we are. I need to have that stuff. Really. Yes, yes, they make me spend it. I have a better idea. Would it be the end of the world if that purchase is made July 1st? It's just, I mean, it, it might not make a difference at all, but in the process of we're trying to make the cemetery plan and tuning and stone maintenance and then never seen something. Some action on the dollars against that future cemetery maintenance for next year. Which, you know, we, yeah, we budgeted 7,500 and we didn't spend anything. But it felt like yeah, we're going to, we should have done it last summer. So we can get it done there for the fiscal year or. Yeah. Would you think that can be something that you'd rather than that they talk about? Yeah, I would. Um, it's not that I don't want to spend the money on so it, so I feel more comfortable doing it. Um, it's just, I mean, it's not that I don't want to spend the money on it. It's just, I mean, it's not that I don't want to spend the money on it. You know, we estimated the amount of and we budgeted so money, including the amount to be applied towards the July 1st budget. To be reduced, reduced yeah. I'd yeah. like to make sure that we've got at least that much in the bank um, cover. And you know, there are some other items out there that we could promise allocated surplus to. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had, I had some, no, right now I'm operating in a bank and I have no idea where we are. We, we, we've already authorized a couple of expenditures from highway department to spend up to the right. initial budget. Right. Um, I have a so, would the board like to wait to apply for some? It's not really a big deal. 
Does it have to be spent by July 3rd? In other words, if you wait till July 1st, if he hasn't got the spent, got the receipt for having purchased it, does that um, cut your partner? Mm -hmm. That's if there's no reason that we couldn't reserve it though if, if if we get to the point where we know what our surplus is we could say out of that surplus we want to reserve 7500 for that's it, it, it wouldn't be spent in the current budget year but we could reserve it out of the surplus whatever surplus we don't know that would be second meeting if you want Potatoes, 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 what difference will it make? It's really my heart, I'm not worried. It makes a difference in terms of, again, how much it of this. Didn't you just say that if we didn't spend it by July 1st, and we might have to look at it? Well, did you just say that? Come out on about next year's budget. This year's budget. Right. We would just have to reserve it. Good so point. So that we could serve it. So we could spend it. In the next year. Well, then, is there, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, is there any reason why um, spending the money now? Do you, like, do you think that brings us close to our limit? Okay, that's good. We've been fiddling around with this cemetery yeah. for years and years, years and years. You know, the old saying goes, you know, strike, strike while the iron's hot. You, know, you can make a motion. Ma now. Many have slipped between the cup and the lip. <clears throat> I make a motion that we uh, spend the $7,500 to get the material, get that fence done. So is, is your motion an amount not to, to exceed $7,500? second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? I was trying to find it, but actually, it's done. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, mm -hmm. the ayes have it. Did I hear a name? Yep. Me. Duncan. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have two liquor licenses that are being requested. I believe one is for Marcella Salsa. Is that a class one? The class one and the class three. Okay. Uh, there's a the Class Trivia Center is having a 40th anniversary party on Saturday. Okay. Is Marcel going to do the outdoor? No, she doesn't have any outdoor. What's that? She doesn't have any outdoor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the hub used to be. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> For the board selection of the real estate licenses. Second. Motion a second. Further discussion? Stay with the Is that a friendly amendment? Okay. Yes. Uh, sending the standard. Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. If there's one more uh, for the special event for your license, yep. so it's called. Mm -hmm. I will move to approve the special event license for the two district. I'll second that. Starts at one o'clock and ends at six p.m. Starts at one p.m. and six p.m. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, may I have it? <laughs> I do believe that we have a committee report coming up from Tuesday Night Live. You do. <laughs> you didn't come here just to see me, did you? No, no, that's that's our little secret. Oh, I guess not. Uh, yeah, I do. I have at least one committee member here with me tonight. Uh, all right, my notes. There you go. You're for TNL and the other. So. Ah, cool. All right. Um, we uh, this you may or may not know, Tuesday Night Live has been going on. Well, it first started in 1989, 35 years ago. Uh, this is we are this we are the senior acts in this whole half of the state in this kind of thing, uh, as far as I know. Um, and um, 
and it's never taken a public dime. It's all self-funded by uh, sponsoring by, by sponsors and vendors and donations. So it's a pretty good deal. We have uh, typically uh, 350 to 550 people at uh, at, at a usual usual concert uh, going public. Um, we have had over a thousand one point a couple of years ago. I forget who the band was, but it was there was no room to sit on the field. It was great. Um, we are, I, we are, I have a full committee of seven, uh, and everybody works their tail off to get to, to get it done. And right now, we're in the throes of uh, a real hustle to try and get to get it. Well, we have we have until until this year we've had our sound done for free by the college. Uh, that's gone away, so we have now uh, contracted with a fellow from Montgomery who is a, a pro. And has good gear, and our sound guy Tim Mikovitz uh, recommended him to Tom. Uh, Tom Wolf knows him too, so I think we're we're in fair hands. But we need sixty four sixty four hundred dollars to get through the season that we didn't need to raise before. Um, we've done that. Uh, we're we're comfortable that we can pay our bands uh, what we contracted for, and we have uh, and can pay the sound for the sound company as well. So we're in good shape. That sixty four hundred is for the sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and let me see what else have I got to say about this. Um, uh, so our, yeah, our poster is going to come out this week. Uh, so it'll be available here in the offices, I guess. How does that happen now? People, people come up here regularly, or. Oh, it's in a white house. We put it up. We post it outside. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, but we like people to pick up their poster and hang it on their fridge. Library. Library. Um. The uh, the, we, the committee the, the things that uh, some people, not me, are working on right now is a better social presence. Uh, doing uh, Instagram and website web page that is independent of the town, uh, or and, and, and but easily linked between the two. Uh, and uh, we, we're, I don't miss it any, but apparently other folks do. So uh, <laughs> we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to approve that um, coming up in the uh, through the summer, I guess. Those posters are old school. I, well, that's, that's as far as I get, you know. Well, here's another one of us, Charles Flom, who was also on the committee, and Sophie, of course. Have a seat. Um, and, uh, like that, um, we are, let me get to the politics of the thing right now. We are very protective of Legion Field. Very. I will refuse to give up one square inch of that field outside of the, the property that the school, that the school, uh, the, the, the school is trustee of, that, what they are. So just bear that in mind when we're, when we're uh, uh, talking about where things ought to go out there. Um, that field, this year we've got, what, 10 vendors, you think? Uh, at least, yeah. Yeah. 10, maybe 11, if you mean, or uh, historical society. Okay. So that's, that completely eats up the ring around the field. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and every vendor we put out there has, <clears throat> takes, away, takes away seating space on a really crowded night. And we expect a couple of really crowded nights this this year, like the one that's coming up is French Tribute Band, um, and that's getting good publicity and uh, going to make a lot of noise. I think it's going to be fun. And there's another one at the end of the season, which is a band from the Walls, and uh, and that's I defy you to sit down when they start. Um, anyway, I, I just wanted to get that off my shoulders about uh, uh, about the Legion Field. It's real important to this town to leave that open. So there you go. Then I'll go to war if I have to. You guys got anything then? Did they see ten website hackers? That's stone tall. Yeah. yeah. Charles is here for that. You're here for the website as well. Uh yeah, I could. <laughs> could be. We're using board members have any questions for yeah, yeah. I, I'd love here. I'd love to bounce off. Who's Chris? <laughs> the artist formerly known as yeah um, yeah it's not P R I N T S it's been dead for twenty years 
<laughs> so, Howard, one of the things that we're asking all the committees is for like big goals and and kind of a you know looking forward what the vision is. Um, are there any big goals that you have other than just continuing to put on a good show every Tuesday? Um, are there things that I know it is a point of pride that you haven't taken any public money, but are there things that you know you would ask for as a public investment um, if you thought that it could be paid for? Um, I don't think so. We're we're as far as I you know, Cal Stanton invented this thing 35 years ago. And he selected Tuesday night because he knew no musicians were working Tuesday night. And 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 like that, you know, I mean it's, he 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 came to this idea for with a uh with with an intimate knowledge of of the of the business. It is a really good, simple vision. And all we're doing is tinkering around the edges. You know, uh he he managed to raise the first couple of years, I don't know, three hundred dollars or something like that to pay the to pay some musicians, you know, but now we're, you know, we're, we're running an $8,000 budget on, on musicians. So roughly, so that's, that's quite a leap. Uh, it's gotten to be a fairly substantial business. It's just a nonprofit business. And I don't, I don't have any ambitions to take her to take this whole thing around to the ball fields or anything like that. I think that would be a terrible mistake. Um, if if in fact we outgrow it, outgrow, outgrow Legion Field truly outgrow it, I would be surprised, uh, very surprised with that. And we probably come to some other accommodation, but I don't have any grand visions beyond where we are. I would just like to see it run smoother, uh, and um, and have things done, in, you know, in a in a more timely manner with a little less confusion. I mean, the seven of us work pretty hard, but you know, sometimes <laughs> things get tangled up um I, yeah so that it contributes just as far as like grand picture big vision mm -hmm. idea goes um you said our budget for music is around eight thousand, and that's we're like trying to approach like, for so long it was like a hundred dollars a head for or for band members that was kind of the budget but we're trying to increase that to be a bit more of like a a livable pay for for bands and, and band members and musicians so we're trying to increase the band's pay a little bit. And also, since I've been on the committee in, since 2019, a vision that I've kind of brought in is just getting a, a wider array of music, more diverse sounds, more diverse people, um, representation on the stage. So that's definitely been an agenda item for PNL. Member number four, come on in. Any further questions from the board? That was a good one. Um, I, I was also going to ask about advertising. Um, you said kind of moving more onto social media. Is there other advertising avenues that you're exploring that you haven't used in the past? No, uh, we're on, thanks to Lois, uh, who does our publicity in the printed media, uh, newspapers and radio and stuff like that. The old fashioned stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's large form. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's my girl over there. Well, that's well. Wow. Um, uh, but she's, you know, that, that stuff is really valuable and getting, making sure that's nice and tight is really important. I don't know where else to go besides the web. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm open to suggestions, sir. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, you know, you're marking up the right tree talking about Facebook and Instagram. Um, the older side of me hates that I'm about to say this, but TikTok is yeah. a thing and for a while YouTube anyway, as well for YouTube shorts, um, putting out short clips of things that are happening at TNL would bring more people to the next TNL. That's a nice idea. Um, it's simple. It's easy to do. Um, so yeah, just a thought, but mm -hmm. don't tell anyone, I guess they will hurt you anyways. I'm, I'm repping TikTok. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want to say. I was going to say, uh, I know you guys are going to talk about the possibly be doing something with the town's website. It would, be, it would be nice if we could have our own page to manipulate a little bit. But other than that, I don't know. Would there be one of you that would be? Let's talk about that on the website. I'll take that as a comment. You're staying for the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, what would be him anyway? <laughs> <laughs> <Not> him. <laughs> Do you folks 
let's record these shows at all. Oh, you can. Make no, right no. Television does. Oh, yeah. I guess yeah. Vermont. Yeah, the the public yeah. television network is out there. They record every single week. They're out there, and then uh, four or five months later, all of a sudden, it comes up on my TV. Yeah, I'm thinking that that's that's that would be a nice thing to do, just to have it and put it out there uh, on social media. Yeah. Is there any worry that we will become victims of our own success? In that regard, I mean, you 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 commented on a thousand people. That's a big, that's a big gap. Yes, yeah. I mean you're, you're yeah, yeah. I mean, it, we're we we do have to be careful of that. I mean, I I, I don't want to just launch in. I think it would be a mistake to 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 really do a blitz and advertising and find ourselves with two thousand people and no place to park anywhere in the village. Ah, uh, that would not be good. Yeah, all I was going to say was that I feel like attendance has only been an issue due to weather. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, if it's a rainy night, we won't have that many people. But really, like, our, we don't have trouble with people showing up to free music, you know? Our attendance has been way down since COVID-19. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, trying to build it back up a little bit to mm -hmm. the normal attendance that we used to have in Tuesday. And you know, and Tom pointed out at the last meeting we had uh, that um, if if we if we have too many vendors or we have, don't have enough people, then the vendors don't make enough money to justify coming back. So we have to be careful of that. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see how it goes. We we have ten vendors <coughs> signed up, but you know they may not all show up. We've actually had a problem with that um, in years past. The last two performances of the season, typically the vendors. Maybe one or two will show up. So, wow, well, what the hell? I made my money. I'm not going. Um, and that's a problem for us because people come to eat. And um, yeah, this is dinner and a movie. It's, uh, you know, dinner and a show. Uh, and it, and it's a it's a theme that works really well. So dinner and a piece of pie. Time. And a piece of pie. A doll. <laughs> is it? the i guess lack of of infrastructure that would be needed for a large scale show like the 2000 people is that what holds you back from no i mean i don't want to outgrow legion field i don't want to outgrow the middle, okay. of the middle village it's that's that's it's a great spot. spot that's my personal <laughs> that's my personal thing really i just do spot. not want to give up legion field for this thing i mean you you know look look at if you go to wednesday night live how's that for a name over in Morrisville, original. Uh, huh? Original. I, uh, well, once you can say the Tuesday Night Live is not <laughs> um, uh, you know, there that's an oxbow. That's a big ass field. And if they've got five hundred or a thousand people there, it still looks thin. Um, and you know, I, I I like the size of our crowd. I like the density of it. If we can keep it that way, that's that would make me really happy. You know, it's going to grow and shrink as the weeks go by, but, but uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, if it, if this gets really much, if this gets to be a really huge thing, uh, I don't really quite know what to do about it. I think I would probably suggest we stop it. It's all a balance that we keep. Yeah. You know, if it gets bigger, then that's when we make decisions. It has to be a safe event. Right. Yeah, yeah, it know? does. Yeah. Casey, did you? Well, a supplemental point, it's actually not only about TNL, but one of the, uh, actually, you made the point of the central location. Uh, before TNL, uh, there was a, 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 a Vermont Rural Community Development yep. Project here in Johnson, and they identified Legion Field as critical because it could be the meeting point drawing the college, drawing the you know everybody together. It was so important. And so yes, Tuesday Night Live has become you know the main feature it's known for, but that doesn't mean that other events and so forth shouldn't be there. Um the band that bandstand is used by the elementary school for here and here and there things, etc. Um and the and you recollected the town 
with the infrastructure and electricity. And I mean, the town's made a big investment in that field, sort of for it as a gathering place. So it, it's bigger than just you. It would be nice to light the field. You know, the last three yeah, performances, the three, the last three performances, that would be awfully nice to do that. Uh, maybe if maybe if some big gas grant got ready to do that, that would be great. But I don't think we should do public. So you guys that. are taking that on. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> next year. That is the type of thing that I want to hear because uh, I I see Tuesday Night Live as an economic development and community development tool, yeah. which means that this falls perfectly under the umbrella of our new employee to work on these type of things. So if there is a grant that could potentially pay for some lighting on that field, but we can go look for it. You right. know, right. Um, yeah. A couple of other things too. I mean, I, I must say now that we're talking about this, we set up. <laughs> drag it out, but we got. There. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, the um, we have a hundred amp service to the bandstand, and it's really not enough. I mean, right right now the sound systems are right right at their limit. We're you know ninety nine amps, so uh, or ninety nine, whatever. But it's. Uh, it's it's awfully close, and in fact, last year we had we had a couple we had a couple of uh, shutdowns during the performance, which is a little dicey. Yeah. Uh, so redoing the electric on Legion Field would be great. Um, yeah, but that would be a nice thing to happen. But we can manage it. Sort I think a few upgrades wouldn't be all that much costly. Probably not. Are you guys planning on running a surplus to try to curb those for a long term plan, or? Well, we've 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 been going into this in into the the next season, typically four to five thousand dollars in or three to five thousand dollars in cash ready to go for the following season. This, this year, we we'll, I don't think we're going to do that because of the sixty four hundred dollars yeah. expense that we've incurred to begin with. So we're just getting our legs underneath us now, trying to figure out the best way to. Uh, we got like fifteen new sponsors. What the hell do we do with those signs? You know, we're going to end up using the backstop and stuff like that. We just, you know, um, it's, uh, it's, we're, we're getting our feet, we're getting the feel for what we're in for. Uh, I'd love to be able to say that, yeah, we can, we can pay for the, the upgrades, but we can't right now. Okay. Is there enough trash and recycling to facilitate? And is there much cleanup after? Well, what we do now is we we set up the only trash station is at the is at the bread oven, community oven, and that works really well. That's also, by the way, uh, our, the committee's uh, home court uh, home home office uh, on the field. So, um, you know, and so we uh, and we always have somebody there. Usually, it's me just telling people, no, that's that's not recyclable because it's got food on it. It's got to go in the trash. That kind of thing. Um, and um, and we take care of it. And uh, we've tried all kinds of things. I, I sit on the uh, waste, the county waste district, and so I have an inn over there. And they uh, they were kind enough to give me all kinds of signage and stuff like that, and uh, and schooled me well on what it is that we can do with what we get. We started out with 500 gallons in trash bags um, the first year that we started collecting the trash, which was about four years ago, three or four years ago, uh, which is nuts. And we've got it down to about three full trash bags now, which is quite a quite a drop. We we compost everything we can take off the field. Um, and generally speaking, the, the place is really clean when we leave at night. Uh, but I always go back on Wednesday morning and walk the field and find a few things, but never much. Um, now the 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 elementary school is another matter. They have the basketball court over there, and because the you know, older kids play over there all during the performances, dribble dribble bang bang. And then, uh, but th but they make a mess, and um, and the principal, uh, I asked the principal one time, is there anything I can do for you? He said, Oh no, no, it's not your problem. So. so. But now we have a new committee member, Jeff Hollis. Yeah. Who is um involved in the elementary school and at one of the meetings he kind of made it a point that he would take that responsibility on as mm -hmm. far as like checking in with the, with the playground after cnl and kind of being that liaison because we want to have a whole like, good relationship with the elementary school in the summer camp so yeah yeah so our our our, uh, our plan is to have all seven of us on the field for the first time 
<laughs> so that there's going to be plenty of people for backup and making sure the vendors are have found a nice place to be and that everybody's happy because the vendors can be <laughs> kind of uppity if they don't like who they're next to or yeah he's in my spot yeah he's in my spot yes. are there uh are there any other large ideas i know we, we kind of have 15 minutes slotted to yeah. keep talking if there's anything big uh, that'll do for now i think it would really be useful if you guys now that you have tossed around a couple of ideas uh, if you could jot those down, you know, to Shane's point, we do have, uh, you know, Randall man who could potentially seek some grant funding mm -hmm. to make some of your visions mm -hmm. real. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. So, especially if it's still on time. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you've got some ideas, uh, jot them down and get them to, I guess, to the Tom, mm -hmm. probably. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. could get them to Randall. And okay. Maybe they could become real instead of dreams. Yeah. So lights and don't, safety is very don't. good. You know, it'd be nice just to have, you know, a nice first aid kit and things like that. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. Oh, geez. You know? <laughs> Howard realizing it's been 37 years or 35 years and they haven't thought of the first aid kit. It's true. I haven't, I haven't, even, it's I haven't true. Even one yet. So it's good. Some of us are a little slower than others. So um, the hiatus in, in the There was. There was four or five years in between there when between uh, the, the Ben and Jerry scoop shop and Legion Field. But uh, yeah, but we're on our 35th year, okay. which is pretty cool, I think. Anyway, for sure. That's all I got. Well, thank you very much. Do appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, everyone. For yeah, I really have words. Certainly. You're welcome. Couldn't do it uh, with you. <laughs> Without. Gotcha. Oh, 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 that's the way. I don't need our help yet. <laughs> we have. Uh, the bread oven next, and I just want to say we got a lovely email. Actually, Tom got one. Apparently, they're basically awesome. That's the gist of it. Yeah. Would you like to? Yeah. No, I I conferred with Jasmine, and that is the message we yeah, like to. That's nice. Yeah, we like to think. Um. Yeah. The major things are that we're shifting to Thursday nights instead of Monday nights. Um. Just so we don't have that overload or front loading the week. Yeah, really because like, all the pizza makers are on hiatus on Thursday night. Um, no, <laughs> I think it's because yeah. just because for some of us who you know we do Monday night bakes and we do Tuesday night live, it's just kind of a lot, especially like with you know, families and and all that. The select board used to really like Monday nights because oh, Mark yeah. would bring in pizza, you know, once a year. He talked about it all year. But now you guys could come. Right now that Mark doesn't actually bring us the pizza anymore, yeah. I can do it. You guys can come and sit. The night I can be with my family every week, I can go down there. So anyway, so that's one big thing. And we're starting, you know, we've already set it up for porch forum and our plan is to kind of have weekly updates reminding people, um, uh, maybe even like a set for the porch forum for every week. Okay, like, hey, we'll see you Thursday, blah 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 with all that. Um, also wanted to note that a lot of people are using the oven outside of us in the committee. So just on Father's Day, there's a graduation party. There's going to be a birthday party this Saturday. Um, so that's great to see. People are getting comfortable firing the oven and using it in a safe way. Um, so just kind of contributing to the community aspect and um, kind of mission of this whole thing in the town. Um, we do have a list of purchases that we wanted to make, um, uh, like a new brush for brushing out ash, a cooler, stuff like this, and um, we're going to hand washing station, yeah, um, and we're going to get the list of Rosemary. Luke, the lately, is compiling the list, and he will send it to Rosemary. Um, but it's all self but Yeah, we have... That's, that's what it's Oh, yes, yes. We have he money to spend. Folks, he's pointing yeah. at me. I yeah. know, I just can't look at him. No, we have about, we've been, so um, Lottie Ruzakrans is uh, our budget finance person, and she's quite good at keeping track of it all. And she, we have about $1,500 of money that we can kind of buy what we need. Um, we're also looking at whether or not getting a stainless steel table um, to replace the kind of plywood going one that we have. Something that could wipe down, be a bit more sanitary, and we could chain it to the posts of the oven. Um, 
So stuff like that. Uh, that's that. And then we have two new committee members, which you guys know, Adrian and Aubrey. And everyone's working really well together. And also this year, the library is partnering with, with us for a couple events. Like they have the uh, No Strings Marionette um, company coming, I think the first bake. They'll have that show going on and then the bake will come right after. And a few other musical things stuff like that. So nice collaboration with a couple town entities. And yeah, um, I think just for one future goal would be a shed for Tuesday Night Live and for us. We'll restore um, a lot of our equipment and things. I heard that might be in the pipeline of happening, but it's I believe Howard was going to draw something and send it. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, that's sort of changed for TNL in that we no longer uh, use our own gear. So, mm -hmm. so we really don't need shit, although I'm still happy to go ahead and. Do some do some drawing to find out. Well, I, uh, I owe Tom a drawing for on these years anyway, uh, so I'd stick it in that uh, and put it probably put it over by the bread oven probably. Where I wasn't. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I think it'd be good for the oven and for the ice rink. Um, and then maybe if DNL has any needs, I think that was it. Maybe beautification committee. I don't remember if they had. Any. A role, but yeah, a couple of committees that could benefit from having this space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it would be useful to have some place to save a lot. So yeah, because yeah, currently we house a lot in our garage over the winter. Stuffs at different, you know, different locations. It'd be nice if it was all just this is town stuff. This is where it lives. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. board members have any questions? Are they awesome to make bread on the committee? <laughs> they are, awesome. and they survived COVID really well. Mm -hmm. Long ways yeah. We gotta do like chicken farm or something. Yeah. <laughs> the is still 450 degrees far away. Yeah. See, Mark goes down there and, and run the thermometer. Yeah. All in the Did any of you have the pleasure of seeing that crew in action during the eclipse? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did not. Pretty amazing. It was amazing. It was awesome. Dude. Yeah, that really showed something for Johnson over there. Beautiful thing. There's music, there's food. We all work in here. The incredible mm -hmm. for the future. Mm -hmm. I want to make a general comment that isn't necessarily apropos to either the Tuesday Night Live with Red Oven Committee. And I'm I'm gonna echo something that Matt Kitty always used to harp on this. We really ought to develop a overall plan, Legion Field. Um, you know, I mean there's there's all kinds of things happening and they're all wonderful. Um, but there can be competing interests um, at times for Legion Field. So I think it would really be nice to have a sort of community vision of what Legion Field should be. Probably ask five different people and we get four different answers. Or six or six. Or, or 12. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. Then it could be banned after the whole time. It could, oh, wait, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll take a small bite. Yeah. yeah, a small bite. Yeah. Uh, maybe yes. one solution to that would have be having like an events coordinator or events committee or something to be able to organize all events and uh, at Legion Field and at the Village Green and everything. And just make a calendar and people submit from the different committees to that. So you're saying a committee to organizing committees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, an organizing committee. Maybe just one person. Or... That's not even a committee on committee. Yeah. Committees, yeah. Um, if there are no other. It looks like he has me. Tom's. <laughs> uh, just to your point, I started making a Google form. Like the whole um, facilities use permit is like kind of clunky. You know, worked in when it was started, but now the world's a little different. So that's what you can. The goal is that the form is done. Would that like an auto populated form? So you guys fill it out, shoot it in, and then update the response and auto populate the calendar accessible online. So we could see the pavilion at Old Mill or the Green or mm -hmm. Legion Field, but in like one place where then we know where there's still some click of interest, right? Like first come, first serve, reserve it, 21st century. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be good. But I think also like 
uh, someone that could push out the events to the socials um, also. Mm -hmm. every, every lot of places are on social media, so one person that now can get all the social media accounts. Maybe I don't agree with, but that's up to the board. Not me. I definitely um, like the idea of more committees who at least want to have a public face adding their own accounts and posting something. But conservation already does it. It's yeah. our study. Yeah. I think the idea that was a calendar, like, I mean, isn't it a calendar on the website that people can go to and look up events? Yeah. Okay. If that could just mean be accurate, then it's Yeah. Like that would be yeah. great. Like a highlights on the front page. Yeah. I mean, like, my vision would be that it would like, auto populate. I think the hard part yeah. is like remembering to update, right? Yeah. Right. So it's like, how do we take the person out of it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, maybe so. mm -hmm. Is that all set up? I think, I think so. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in. Mm -hmm. I'll have to ask all the delegates for this today. A lot. Thank you for all your efforts. All committee members work hard. No, see them enough. Uh, a general, I, did you talk with the chairs of the committees about reporting requirements? Oh, yeah, we really ought to get that figured out. Uh, oh, it's a, we don't need to talk about it tonight, but your chair should be in contact. Um, you know, to the yeah, okay. Jasmine, and Luke first, which we may not have been okay. to get it. Jasmine and Luke are co chairs, so I don't know if you have Luke, Galen, and females. Could you email it to me tomorrow? Yeah. Or tonight? Yeah, or tonight. Yeah. And then you can just have them both on that. Yeah. Yeah. There's Especially with Jack and Sue in July. Yeah. I, mean, they can have the I think we have some problem solving. And we, there's also been, I think, way for some clarification from okay. Secretary of State. So it may be premature to get too excited, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, who would the board like to see in July? Committee wise, what makes the most sense? Having the seat. Unification, Iraq, Historic Society, Tree Board, Conservation, Planning Commission. That gets no. through the year. Correct. <laughs> well, they're on the tree board. The tree board. Right. Right. It might be time. Is that your recommendation? I, I've never met the right it. it would be really exciting for me. Do we want to try and do two more one right? <clears throat> Sometimes two lines up really well. If somebody said conservation, I would I would say we should do tree board. But if we're doing rec, I will say I think if we put recreation on the agenda, we're going to get more interest possibly in that. Uh, so it might need to be able to take up. We might need to budget more than fifty. Twenty. <laughs> Is the board good with Rec? Uh, second meeting in July. Sounds good. Mom, um, do you have a contact for their chair? I'm not sure who their chair is. I think this. I think it was. We'll need to get that. I think it's a unit. picture that I heard with the chair, but it is a committee in flux. All right. If you need help tracing somebody down, Tom, let me know. Yeah, I'm sure I can get it. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Mr. Governor Bridge Alternatives. Mr. Chair, before we jump into that, there's, there is one thing that really should have brought up on their standpoint concerns and issues. Bill, he only has four. It's too late to do one it. Plot. It can be very quick. Sure. It's fire. That was deserved, but for, oh, fire. Was, yeah. Um, we, we've We've gotten a number of concerns, complaints about fireworks. My my main pitch is to anybody that is looking at this on social media, um, there is a fire a fire fireworks permit process that has to be gone through. And Tom, I think it would really be good to post that numerous times between now and July 4th on Front Porch Forum so that people are aware that there is a fireworks. Permit that you have to go to the future state or this ground. I also it's state it's state law, but it's also just yeah. I, I also think since you brought it up, it's worth 
a call to the sheriff's department and just saying, hey, we have this town emergency. If it being broken on this night, then then people need to be responsible because that has been a problem the last few years. All right. Well, thank you. We're back pedal. We're forward pedaling. We're good. Mm -hmm. Full steam ahead. Scribner Bridge Alternatives. I do believe that PHB is here to provide a uh, final presentation. Are we doing printouts? You guys using the projector? Yeah, I'll go ahead and plug her in. Is there anything to close this? Uh, you can't close it, but you can it's have it on the floor. I can take that out. I'll just say that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So that's the running of the candidates. Like separate toast? But I have no problem with toasting. I'm sorry. Thank you. Am I a dev? No. Thank you. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this. Look at both. This work. Get that. This bridge. I was just looking at. Just looking at now. Yeah. It's beautiful. Look at. Well, look at. Well, I was just thinking. All right. Okay. Yeah. Just look at the slides. I'm talking. Sign. All right. Well, thank you for having us. Um, so following up on the local concerns meeting that we were here for previously, we've now kind of evaluated some alternatives that we kind of discuss at that local concerns meeting and we plan to present now. Uh, so here's just kind of a brief agenda. We're going to go through some introductions, the project purpose and need, um, a review of scope and schedule, some existing conditions, just an overview, um, some not only those conditions, but like some, some constraints that we have, like what we're using to evaluate some of those alternatives, um, the actual alternatives we have considered, and we'll show kind of an evaluation matrix for those next steps, and then kind of any questions or comments you guys might have. So I am Jamie Roy. I am the project manager for BHB. Um, we have Matt here as well. He is a project designer. We are working with the town of Johnson and also the Lamile County Planning Commission on this project. So our purpose and need that we have come up with, and feel free to weigh in on this, you know, at the end too, if you'd like. So the purpose of this project is to identify a cost-effective solution to preserve the historic Scribner Covered Bridge while enhancing its flood resilience to mitigate future storm damage. This project is needed to maintain the integrity of the historic structure. Um, improve the hydraulic performance and try to reduce the recurrent maintenance demands due to flooding um, issues. Can, I ask you a yep. Can you step back even one or two steps? Yep. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the schedule. Um, so we are here today for the alternatives presentation. After this, we'll take any feedback and then prepare a draft uh, re report that kind of summarizes the alternatives we've looked at, and then we'll submit that to you. And then any feedback from that. In, in theory, there's supposed to be a final public meeting that then presents the chosen alternative. Um, and then after that, we would submit the final report. So here's just the location of the bridge. You can see that it is right near the intersection of Rocky and Hunter Roads. It crosses over the Gihon, uh, flows in that direction, the North Arrow is up. Just a little overview, I'm sure you're all well aware of where the structure is, but you know, just um, Some photos of the existing conditions. You can see some of the flood damage to the timber uh, siding itself. You can see a, a rock outcrop there. Um, you can see in this photo how the channel is kind of, like in that photo down there, how the channel is constricted. Just some closer photos of the structure itself. Overall, the structure is in pretty good condition. It ranges from, I believe, fair to satisfactory, depending on what component you're looking at. Overall, the timber is in pretty good shape. Um, some of the sidings come off. Uh, there's damage to the there's some deterioration of the actual steel stringers underneath, um, primarily located at the ends of the beams. But overall, the structure itself is in pretty good shape. How about the abutments? Uh, those are 
satisfactory. So those are those are also. I mean, they have some some cracking, some you know, like you can see, kind of some like efflorescence and you know, kind of seepage coming through. But they're overall in pretty good shape. Like no, nothing that would have to be fixed. I mean, you could you could certainly address that if you wanted to make it look nicer. Um, but nothing like structurally really wrong with it at this point. Um, so hydraulics are kind of a big concern here. The, the Gihon will depart the channel over near the Rocky and Hunter Road intersection and overtop that northern approach roadway, creating damage. Um, some notable flood events were obviously the 2019 Halloween flood. There was one in April of 2014, I believe. The This whole project area is kind of located within the FEMA regulatory flood plain and the floodway. So anything that we do will need to kind of comply with the NFIP minimum standards, um, depending on the alternative chosen here, work, it may require a stream alteration general permit or a, an Army Corps permit as well. As you could see in some of those photos, the existing bridge is, it, the channel is very constricted. So the bridge is about a 39 foot span. Bankful width was measured at approximately 69 feet. In an ideal world, if you were putting in a new structure, you would meet or exceed that bankful width condition. That would be the actual span of the structure. Um, and then kind of listed some existing flow depths here. So the 25 year flood that currently overtops the roadway, it's a little less than a foot, the 100 year flood, you're about, the water is about four and a half feet over the, the approach roadway. Um, and my understanding is that it did, does intersect like the lower, the low cord of, of the structure itself. Is that 69 foot measured above the bridge? Or so, I'm not like a hydraulic expert, but, or, you know, it's not my area of expertise, but generally when you're doing those, taking that bank full width measurement, you're kind of looking like at the actual location of the structure, but both upstream and downstream to try to get the overall general picture of like, how wide is that channel trying to be for the Gihon, like in the general location of the structure. I'm not entirely sure exactly how far upstream and downstream that goes, but it's kind of like, this is how wide the river wants to be in the, the general area of the project. In my experience, visually, that's kind of, if you look at the marking of where any vegetation stops growing, it's usually about there. That, so it's lower than what it might be right now, per se, or it's higher than it will be. Under, under Vermont's stream water rules, wouldn't the span be one and a half times the width of the So right now the span? The, the rule is 1.0 times bankful width. I think in an ideal world, it, it used to be at one point it was 1.2 bankful width, but there was a lot of pushback on that, I believe, just due to cost and you know concerns with that. But ideally you would be at least at bankful width. Um, some other, you know, considerations here. So we had a sub consultant go out and do an archaeological resource evaluation um, that has been completed. They identified archaeologically sensitive areas in all four quadrants of the, the bridge. So really moving forward as the project moves forward, um, an additional, well, they have recommended, our sub consultant has recommended that you proceed with a phase one survey prior to any ground disturbing activities that would take place. So essentially that survey is more involved. It's like you're taking actual samples, you're digging um, to try to determine what might actually be in there, if there is anything archeologically sensitive in there. Right now, given the, the area and the information that we have, that is certainly a possibility. Um, and obviously the, the bridge itself is historic. There's also the adjacent farmstead on the northern boundary. So any alternatives we're looking at, we're going to try to avoid any impacts to that historic bridge. We don't really want to trigger an adverse effect. Um, and then, you know, depending on the alternative too, like not just the structure itself, but you want to try to minimize any impacts to the overall view shed and the overall kind of setting and nature of the bridge and the, the bridge itself. And then we've also looked into some natural resource evaluation and there are wood turtles in the area. Um, so that is a listed as rare, threatened and endangered species. So we'll need to take that into account. 
And then there's protected lands in all four quadrants of the bridge as well. Meaning lands that are in land trust or something? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so with that, that's kind of like, you know, just a brief overview of what we've kind of been looking into. And then Matt is going to kind of discuss the alternatives. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we start with do nothing, always an alternative. Um, we were looking at two main alternatives other than that. Uh, alternative two is a resilient roadway low water crossing that is armoring the roadway where the, the river overtops it and making it easier to fix and less likely to erode. And alternative three is adding a high flow relief culvert that is putting in an additional culvert uh, in that spot that gets overtopped. It would be not always engaged, it's high flow relief. So the invert bottom of that culvert would be at the elevation that the river is normally. So the idea is it only gets used during a flood event. Um, here we've drafted up that uh, armored area of the roadway. You can see it right here. The idea is that water, um, once it gets high flow, instead of going through everywhere, it gets diverted through this 40 foot wide area. Um, and you can see, take this line right here and do a profile of it. That is what you're looking at right down here. So see the uh, bridge right here, existing bridge. There is your OHW. And then here is this. So the idea is to drop the existing grade of the roadway about a foot. And then underneath that have a foot of subbase gravel, something that can be driven on, but in the event of a storm would get taken away. And then underneath that, something more resilient, type two stone, larger stone. And that would stay in place during flood event. And then right here, what we have is just larger stone, even four foot stone, just to keep everything in place, hold up the embankments. Now, isn't there stone on the left end of that already that was ripped? This is probably by the end. Yeah, that is stone right now. It's hidden from pictures. I haven't been there. It's probably type two stones, about two foot, one foot diameter. Pretty good stone in the roadway already. It was put in after the flood of, uh, you know, the 1995 flood? No, the, the flood we had at uh, Halloween flood. I mean, that was the bad one. You know, they washed an awful lot of uh, earth out of there. And you're talking about a culvert to go in there to take care of the overflow. The amount of water that went around there and washed out, you'd have that big culvert just to accommodate that. So I don't think that culvert's going to work at all. I think that the rock is already in there, which the town put those rock in after that flood, about the Halloween flood. Well, it's already in there. I uh, wouldn't be the exact flood that we're, or the exact stone that we're proposing, but yes. Um, and I agree. So what do you, what are you saying? That we have to dig all that out and we have to put stone in there. That's the size that you recommend. That is the proposed alternative. Yeah. That's crazy. And we yeah. can certainly inventory what. I know yeah. somebody has to pay for it. Those rock in there are fine the way they are. That we, we built it that way to do exactly what you're talking about. So I, I agree with what you're saying that a uh, larger, very large culvert will be needed uh, to take all the water. So I'll just briefly talk about our last alternative. It would be proposed that uh, high flow relief culvert, it would be what we have um, still doesn't meet current design standards. Um, you would need a huge culvert to do that and you don't have the space with the existing bridge in there. But you could potentially fit a 20 foot wide by five foot high something around there, culvert, um, with the invert being at the same elevation as ordinary high water. Um, and then, of course, more stone here. This isn't the same stone that is in place right now. This is stone that is, so I guess there's two areas of stone that we're proposing. This is similar to what is in place in this area. Uh, this region and this region, type two stone, two foot, it is just large stone. And then directly at the inlet and outlet of the culvert would be stone which is essentially the same thing but it has more fines in it to replicate actual um like the bottom of the stream as it exists 
think you've seen that. Um, one thing to note is that the way we have it drawn right now, um, due to the 20 foot span, that is pretty large for a culvert. Um, to fit that five foot rise and then also have space for roadway would be likely that you would have not much material on top of that culvert or you'd be driving right on top of the culvert. So you'd be a concrete culvert? We're yes. showing precast right now, yes. Yeah. And Most likely. And that top would have to be reinforced because of yeah. the traffic. Yeah, so you'll have a, it would be a thicker top slab to, to not have, typically you'd have about two feet of fill on there in a normal situation, but that's just going to cut down on your hydraulic capacity there. So uh, I've been directly involved with numerous floods over there, which has taken the road. Um, and one of the issues is all of the sediment from there goes down the river, um, which I know at the time, fish and wildlife were not too keen on. Um, and they're going to have some input on what gets done. One, one thing that we had talked about, which I'm not seeing here as a potential alternative was the idea of armoring it and, and allowing it to wash, you know, the top coat to wash into the river. I mean, it's a great option. It, yes, it preserves the road and you could get it back up pretty quickly, but what about putting a paved or concrete, you know, spillway through there as opposed to simply letting that material wash down the river? I mean, so that's something that we can certainly address in the report. Um, the problem with concrete indoor pavement, you're going to want to keep that. Typically, with a, with a with a covered bridge, you don't have you don't have pavement or concrete directly up against it. That's going to impact the historic setting. That's going to impact the view shed. That's going to change overall the way the whole structure. Looks. Putting a 20 foot wide culvert in there is going to change the view yeah. shed too. And that, I mean, yeah, and that and the, the driving involved. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, a member of the public asked a question. I live above there. Why not push all of that water to that field? Well, what, is what are you talking about? This field. No. Mm -hmm. No. Up there. Here. This one. Isn't that five or six feet higher than the river? Well, I've seen those do that a lot of way. And, and I think part of like because this is constricted, you know, the river is trying to go this way, like especially when flows get right. high. So it's not doesn't want to. Well, it backs up pretty far. And the, the Jones brothers you know, tried to save that oxbow and they put in a ton of material. But it really hasn't done it, but I think their the feed probably speed is spread up there. May I? Do you guys have a lot more for a presentation? I feel like we're going to get it. No, we and have we, we have a, a matrix a that shows like the we have, have a matrix that shows kind of the pros and cons like okay. in summary okay. form and then and then questions. Okay. So no, so there's like at, one more. We're slide. at Q and A, or if you want to do your last. Let's slide. let's talk about that I feel real like quick. We're getting the Q and A real quick. And I so we have we have cost here too, which is probably good to see. So alternative one three. Alternative two, low water crossing. What we have here is breaking down by construction costs with a 20% contingency engineering fee that is 15% of these two. Um, mine for total costs. So you see alternative. Of a million. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah. I mean, the and we is can itself. certainly look at like a like a swash pipe or something, but you're not going to get as much capacity out of that and you have to bury it. Were you, you guys exposed. the same firm that did the study in 2010? No, because no. the, the 2010 study was, I'm surprised, only not that much. I think they were at 400 and some odd thousand in 2010. For the, for the, us, I think that was the, the, the yeah. additional culvert. They had the exact same alternatives. We talked about this, or I, I voiced it over up there at the college because I came up with the grandiose, wonderful farmer idea of two undersized culverts and concrete them in with a swale and a few. Give six inches of material so your greater operator's happy. What are their operators left? The so. the uh, oh, I, yeah, <laughs> I've mentioned yeah. that too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, paving that swale was talked about. What was the other one? Was there, there were like five on Oh, there. so another one I mentioned, which was probably well out of the wheelhouse of 
because I'm not a hydrologist, right? But the village of Hyde Park has a dam upstream. So if there was more coordination, granted, you'd have to do all sorts of crazy modeling, but it's pinching, right? And, and it's a spot for ice jams, but like we had a flood there in December and that was a alluvial flood, is that the word? It was flow, it wasn't ice jam. In situations like that, if that dam was used to reduce the flow of water, it could have just been kept at the top of the banks and it'd be free for everyone. Now, Casey had a question. Uh, yeah, well, it's going to just add trouble somewhat. No more trouble. Getting a little back. Uh, the whole topic of spans, um, and this top, the whole topic of spans and inadequate, you know, too pinchy, too narrow bridges. Um, the, we, we have seen the guy on River Study uh, a couple of years ago that looked at all the bridges on the guy on. And they say, oh, too narrow. The span is not adequate. And that's relevant to the topic of the Lamoille watershed study work and what you know issues um, in the region. So it's not just this bridge that has an in inadequate span. Uh, so it makes me nervous to think about sort of final solutions or too expensive solutions for one particular bridge when it's a regional problem and it, it's one it, that really has to be looked at in conjunction with whatever the heck else is going on with the watershed yeah i this is just an updated study, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, sorry, but we we're going to go after funding. The study that we had was too old to go after funding. So we're doing the study again. Yeah. So yeah, that we, we can go after down funding. those alternatives. Huh? The, the previous study had like eight alternatives in it. And we kind of pared those down and like in coordinating with, with Tom and the, the, the LCPC. So uh, this and, is like updated construction costs for two, three of them. Yeah, I mean, we have changed the details and yeah, I mean, we didn't, they are same over, I mean. Ideas is, in principle, I'm not saying you guys didn't do better. No, I, I wasn't I, trying to get at that. No, ideas in principle. I understand. Yeah, um, may I, um, uh, so the last two floods we had, uh, you know, last year, uh, what happened at our place, for those of you who don't know, we live literally, Casey and I live literally in the middle of the river. Uh, right, well, just a quarter, a quarter mile down, eight a mile down. And uh, when the well, Johnson was under five to six feet of water, the guy on came up to the point where it was one inch below our doorstep and went down. And one reason we were saved there was because of the store of the uh, fluvial plane storage that all those fields make up. It's a great big capacitor for those of you who know anything about electronics. You know? It's a capacitor. It's a big tank, and it holds that back so that it it lets it go at a at a reasonable rate and not all at once. Um, and uh, and it works. Now it beats the hell out of the road above alongside the bridge, but there are ways around that. Um, when I first came on the board of, of the select board, what year was that? Done? I mean, it's twenty five years ago. It's a really long time. Really long time ago. We were both without white hair. And anyway, uh, I had hair. <laughs> um, we um, we had a problem over on the end the other the other end of County Hollywood, which water which is literally literally on the border with Waterville, but it's in Waterville, and there's this little stream that comes down through there, and it washes out all the time. And Johnson was responsible for that that road. And I had just been in New Mexico, and for the first time in my life, I would seen what they do when when it rains. And I tell you, they got problems there because there's nothing to stop the land from just totally eroding and falling apart. So what they do is they 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 do a concrete humpback whale humpback basically, and they run a bunch of culverts through it for the low water stuff, and then the high water stuff, 
Nobody drives over it because it's pouring over the top of that, that concrete thing. It's cheap, it's easy, and it works. Um, now that's, I say that, but the fact of the matter is I would prefer things stay pretty much the way they are so that the, so that the fields need to get flood properly. But that's, I'm just, I'm just going home. Right so you would do nothing? I would do nothing or very little. I would, I would armor the hell out of the road because it's, it's, it's a shame to have to watch it. So replace it every time. Seems like alternative two. And if Mike is right, yeah, we're halfway there. Right. Mm -hmm. So would be my I I am yeah, I I don't I, I don't know that I can get into a discussion of just how that's done in terms of the amount of stone we put in and how the road treatment is done and all like that. Incidentally, I haven't spoken to the Jones brothers, but I think they're gonna tear that house down. They're not doing anything with it and it's gonna sit there until the local the local darling torch it that gives. Um, but oh, so yeah, it's really it's really washing out that house. Um, anyway, and that would open up possibilities. Mm -hmm. So included included in all your presentation here is also basically fixing the, some of the bridge work. So alternatives two and three would include that the cost that we are showing right now does not include fixing the bridge because. The assumption was that that would be the same for both two and three. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much of the bridge that you can see right now without doing kind of like a full in depth inspection. It's hard to develop like a full. I mean, it, we will include additional information, like in the draft report, about what the repairs are that are needed and what those we anticipate for those costing. But the problem with some of these timber structures is that you have to start taking them apart in order to see everything. Um, but that will be included in our final report. It's not in these numbers right here. You said the bridge was in pretty good shape. I, I think we did a study on that bridge a number of years ago, and we said that there was caterpillars, beetles, and all this other stuff in it, and it had to be replaced. So I don't get it where you say it's in pretty good shape. I'm really just right? basing that off the 2020, the most recent inspection that this that we trend did. That's really the information that we have to go on right now. It's effectively a steel bridge, you know. Yes, I know. The timber. Some of the other uh, you know, some of the other timbers in there sort of infestated with uh, bugs. I think I think the words that you used were specific to the grading scale, correct? So you you yeah. were you were not referencing your own mm -hmm. opinion that it is no fair like the trend says the deck is in good condition the substructure is satisfactory mm -hmm. okay. and the superstructure is fair so and that fair is the lowest rating and that is kind of what controls the overall condition of the structure itself. So. Are there any further questions or comments, or are we just waiting for a final decision? Do you need decisions from us tonight? What the board would like to pursue in terms of better numbers? Yeah, I mean, if you have a preference, we can certainly take that into consideration with the the report and this the you know selected alternative. I I think like so in terms of alternative three, what we're showing here is going to increase your hydraulic capacity the most. It's not going to increase it enough for, you know, given the cost, it's not, you're not going to meet standards at that price. Um, alternative two, you're not really increasing the hydraulic capacity at all. You maybe are a little bit, but you're effectively trying to make that as resilient as possible so that, you know, there's limited maintenance concern, concerns moving forward. Um, I'll, I'll add to Michael's point that, that that is similar to what is in there, but the proposed alternative two, that crossing is like a four foot stone that's holding the the part of the roadway in. So it is different than what is existing. Yeah, and we can certainly look at like, you know, as this moves forward through actual design, like that can, you know, we'd have survey go out there, like all of that would actually be documented and assessed. Like we're basing this off of kind of visuals, what you can see, there's a lot of like greenery out there too. Like it's hard. I don't know the actual detail that's there. Like you can see a top layer of stone, and it's certainly possible that some of that can be reused and try to cut down on some of that cost. But I mean, we're kind of just basing this off of right now, like what the standard detail would be. You'd want to key in that stone, like with larger stones. So that's what it's based off of right now. But that can certainly be evaluated, you know, as we as we move forward too. We fixed it, so 
it would skim off the top and leave the bigger stuff on the bottom. So really what I would hope that we just replace the boards on the bridge and forget about the rest. Well, this would, did you add, this would add stone under the, like that adds the stone under the roadway too. Right? See the way it is right now. Okay. So you're in favor of alternative point. Basically, yeah. Temperature of the board. My preference is probably number two. I think number two makes sense because I think that we can move forward and find the grant money and restore the historic nature of the bridge where it needs. That doesn't restore the bridge. But well, I it would be, it would be additional, right? Yeah, well, we can include that. And we, you know, our intent was there are certain aspects of this, like VTrans has recommended that the steel, the ends of the steel beam to be repaired because they're, they have a, a decent amount of corrosion and that's kind of where all that water goes. So, like, you know, that can be, We'll, we'll give you like kind of a list of like these are the repair items these are rough cost and kind of these are the order in which you know maybe this makes sense to address them in this order they don't necessarily all have to be done at once either but if you start getting into the actual timber structure and the frame of it that portion of it gets pretty expensive because then you have to shore the structure you might have to jack it move it to to actually do some of the repairs that could be required um, i can't see them repairing that steel they're going to end up saying it needs to be replaced with core 10 steel or something and it's going to be done just as you say they're going to have to move that bridge off then they're going to get into the everything else and it's going to be a million dollar project or it's all or more i know but i mean let's say two million Duncan, what are you what are your thoughts you're looking downstream from the right abutment to like Rocky Road, like an additional bridge, like an extension? Yeah, Could so we, we kind of, capacity? yeah, I mean, we looked at that in conjunction with alternative three. And again, that has kind of a big, you're not going to be able to fit a very large span in there. Like it, it, you're not going to be able to get the capacity that you need. You're going to have increased costs with that. It's, you know, most, most, um, Historic structures are single spans, right? They're not going to have a whole other bridge span leading up to it. At least with the culvert, we could, you know, bury that slightly so you only see it, you know, from the river itself, not necessarily when you're driving over the top of it. Um, you know, you could be looking at more of an adverse effect with an additional bridge span. And it so, would add costs, and we really don't know what that existing is. And because of the ice jam issue, that was right. To you know, keep the crab out of the river. If you want to go bigger, just put it in bridges and make jam lighter. That was a different bird's fish. Not saying that's good. No, I, I mean, I would, I don't think you're going to, given the constraints on the north, you're not really going to be able to get a big enough span in there to get what you need. And then you're going to have a big pier in the middle that's going to collect a bunch of material. Debris. It's debris. One of the reasons that bridge is still there is the fact that the road washes out. Right. It's a built-in circuit breaker. Right. And you know, would... that, that bridge has survived the 27 flood. Um, yeah. You know, it's survived a lot of floods. Um, but every time it happens, the road washes out. Which is why I, I go back to the idea. I like alternative two. But I don't see anything wrong with trying to put a, a concrete swale in there, you know, so that you don't wash all of the debris down the river every time it washes out. So, you know, I think that could be done. You know, if I remember correctly, the previous engineers talked about building a tow. You know, which would have to go fairly deep to so that we wouldn't have floodwaters undercutting that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it could it could be done. Um, and you could avoid, you know, it, it could be a once and done. We could you know, we could avoid the future costs because it's gonna happen again. And we know it's gonna happen again. Um, and we again the only reason that works right now is because that end of the bridge is low enough that it allows the water to bypass and it goes right around the bridge and right back into the river. So why not let it do what it wants to do? But just and, yeah, with that alternative, I mean, we would be lowering it even more to, to force the water over there. It would be even lower than 
than the fresh. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea, but I I prefer to see concrete in there. But what's the data? What why do we need either bank properly? Oh no. No, no. two thousand nineteen, wasn't that like thirty eight thousand dollars or something? Oh, yeah. In two thousand thirteen yeah. they trucked for two days filling this hole. That's what I meant. Yeah, it's a big hole. It's, it's a big hole. It's not a big hole. It's 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 a big hole. Duncan has a proposal that he thinks would take less to fill. But it's concrete soil. What is that concrete soil? You know, look at what it would want mm -hmm. that water to be on the for two, three feet of material. It provides some option. Like, you have to assume that they're allowed to walk out to that. It flows right over the concrete. Water and soil. So, concrete takes under some soil. Yeah. Yeah, it flows right over the concrete. That's what a low water crossing is. Question. Casey. Does number this option two the low water crossing require the same uh, archaeological studies? Yeah. Uh, so there's each corner of the bridge here has you would need to yes. these would be directly yeah. overlapping what have been identified as ar archaeologically sensitive areas. I don't think you can see this border, but there's a little line that says arch goes around it, so it's. Right there. It's entirely possible there's nothing actually there, but it would just require additional. And we have, um, you know, if the, depending on what moves forward, the the cost for that phase one is approximately fourteen thousand dollars. This just would fall apart. Right. A lot of that area is blocked out there. Yeah, previous well, floods anyway. Right. Most not even there's nothing there. Not there. there. Uh, but that's out of there. Yeah, I know. You gotta play the game. So spend uh, your money. There's a snow roller out there. Yeah. Big concrete yeah. snow roller. Yep. Yeah. In there. There's big chunks of concrete yeah. out there. That's all I think. I mean, I appreciate your looking into it. I think the board's leaning more towards option two, if that's structured in your recommendation. Um, obviously, that'd be a final report. Yep. Final public meeting. Am I right? We have the line here. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Call on number two. You're you were at number two with alterations. Yeah, and I had two plus. Yeah, two. yeah, and I can talk our, our hydraulic, like you know, talk about the concrete slab and we can add some additional information from there. Yeah, you know, I love not to put words in Duncan's mouth, I think he's looking at you know, functionality standpoint. Um, oh. And visually, concrete in a real way doesn't bother me. Yeah, and it doesn't bother me, but it might bother Shimbo or Force it doesn't the bridge in my Yeah. Um, you know, but it's also possible, you know, I've talked to our historic experts too. Like you could you could add concrete or pavement, just not all the way, you know, leave it not all the way up to the bridge. So you still have that that gravel. Yeah, you know, like there could be some combination. Yeah, there could be some combination of that as well. Yep. And we can include language accordingly on that. Thank you very much. Are there any further questions? We are running about five minutes. We'll have to go at all. We'd like to keep talking, but if we're all good, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so, yeah, we would get you a draft report next month if that works. And then after that, um, you know any feedback, and then we would schedule the. If there's a a date you would like the final um, meeting that we can set, or I can coordinate with Tom after. Because, all right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item is website. I believe this could be an excessively long conversation or a relatively short conversation. I'm going to try to make it. Very short. Get a new one. Uh, and I'm going to move to authorize Tom to draft RFP to redesign the town jobs website. Second. This motion on the floor and a second. Further discussion? We don't have it in the budget. I, RFP. 
He's getting requests for proposals. Okay. I don't, I don't know if the game plan is maybe with budget for it. Just look at that. That's a down close spot. Could, uh, okay. could on an interim basis we allow to you know, two day analytics to add a good your own page on the we have a Facebook page and that's where we're aiming our traffic to so you have a Facebook page. Yeah, let's page. not even go there. Yeah, yeah. okay. okay. Well, and, and I mean like a lot of committees have a Facebook page. I am certainly open to that as well. I think that can be separate to the motion. But so your motion is to get an RFP, bring it back to us next month, we can review it. Now we can get an idea on cost to figure out. If we're doing it this year, budgeting for it next year, whatever each month here. Yeah, a nice modern. That's your only way. Modern web page. Um. So I'm kind of speaking for the real share committee and for myself. Um. I have some logos to present to you guys for kind of like rebranding direction to go with. Um. I don't know if we can do that like next meeting or something. Um. And I'm willing to. With that, I'm willing to show like some options for new website designs. Um, so he, I think he should do an RFP, but maybe um, a web developer RFP um, where they could like develop a design I create or, you know, like, yeah. But, and then also for the rail trail committee piece, uh, the rail trail committee has done work in organizing what amenities the town offers, which could go into the reconstruction of the new website. So like shopping, uh, uh, and like art and culture, and like just like a organization of what all the town has to offer. Yeah. These conversations have been going on. I have been a lot of the rail trail committee meetings where they've been happening, but yeah, they've, they've been going on for a little while. Uh, yeah, I find mean, to your point, we did ask you to. Uh, come up with some logo ideas that I believe we have not put back to the agenda. Yeah, so that's so, uh, October. It was yeah. it was a while ago. Um, um, so there's a motion on the floor in a second. Is there any further discussion on that motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. The ayes aye. have it for an RFP to come back to us. I don't. So this is a generalized. Question. <laughs> if we're going out for an RFP for a new website, do we want it to be a town website or a town and village joint? It would be important in the structure of the RFP, I think. Absolutely. And I'm just asking that the general expenditure question for the full region for the next month. I think we need to know whether the village is interested and willing to help pay for such a project. Okay. Uh, so I think the from my perspective, the need for a new website is pretty clear. Um, it's been clear for a long time. Uh, and whether or not they're willing to move forward with it, I think we should move forward with it. It would be great to have them on board. That's the way the board feels. That, that's that's just my opinion. I, no, I can't I hear you. It would be nice, but I mean, how long is it going to take? I'm going to ask them to put on that next thing. So I can get their RFP started. Okay. That's okay. that fair. That's fair. What's up? You good with that? Further conversation on the website? I don't mean to put a lot out there. I don't mean to put a We just say in regards to whether it's the town or the village, I don't see them actually going off on their own. So if it's a a setup where it's a, if it's a platform where uh, you can accommodate them later on, they're just going to follow. They're not going to go out and build it. Good info. And they probably run out of She was just asking if they would be interested in money to pay. I believe that. I, yeah, I, I, you know. What should be good information whether we want to go or not? Yes. <clears throat> Further conversations on the website? I believe TNL is good on that. Many cooks for them. Yeah. Um, Do you want know to go on with that? That? You know, well, I mean, the whole village town issue seems pretty squarely to me. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ask them that we need a affirmative that that do you want to be part of this website or you want to pay fifty percent of its creation and maintenance or do you want to do 
So, because if you look at our website, a good deal of what's on there is village stuff. It is. You have to water balance and, and all yeah. that stuff. It would be pretty simple to pull all of yeah. ours off and make it keep it there. You know, that's probably the, like, I went to a new website and gave them only $1,350. It was super cheap. It was 2020. And so if we use somebody who's WordPress friendly, it's like super fast. And then it's not rocket science to pull data and then recreate, you know, like they have themes and make it, you know, be ready to go. If you look at all these other towns, they're just themes on WordPress. And then it's just sharp pictures. And that's where we can add some of the functionality that we were talking about earlier with, you know, different facilities being able to have a calendar on a web page where someone can make an event for X date and then it's automatically on the calendar. All of that is out of the hands of people in the office. It's just done by a plugin, you know. Um, exactly. I mean, that's really what you want is like you want somebody to go online and sign up for the for the agenda. So every time an agenda is posted. You know, like send make things take, take the person out yeah you want the that's it yeah. I, I totally support what you're saying but you do not want the whole thing about maintenance you want to cut you want to cut the back end person out of that as much as human wants because then you get into a situation where they're not acting upon the time line that you want them to so you don't know what you said so if you can have an rfp for us by our second meeting in july all right Without planning. So, uh, do you have a quick update? HMGP. Uh, what I did, I believe the, you did the printout. Yeah, which is so they there's a few ideas um, that came that came out of this. <clears throat> there's one. There's um, this is an interesting concept. So this is an email from Duncan, which I thought was more comprehensive than the, than the update, and then a reply to that. Um, one idea, which might be uh, part of this grant or not, are the Route 15 bridges by Hogback Road and Main Street, which is still yet to be determined, but to create, to take away the quote unquote damning effect. Um, two is uh, farm property flood benching, which is Oh, um, plant that's been used for farming through the two year floodplain. Um, and then three is mitigation at the skate park, which I think we've all been uh, talking about, but that's now being considered <coughs> under river grant. Um, four is uh, relocation and upsizing bridges and culverts. Um, this is interesting where we might be able to use this money for Scribner Bridge, where I was kind of hearing what they were saying, and then now we have $90 million. We put this in the free application now, and we went to culvert, we might be able to get 100% of it paid. So this is like a window here where we might be able to bring that in. People talk about more of the draft proposal, draft plan. But I'll let, I was going to let Seth know, hey, here's this plan from BHB, this might solve the Scribner Bridge problem with the best solution. It's just really expensive, you know, and, and will the state pay for it, even though it doesn't need the political inspection. And then regional multi town projects, um, which is uh, just um, solving, uh, solving this problem as we move upstream all the way up to the cabinet in Greensboro. Um, where the problem is that we need a single municipality. And in the past, Johnson's kind of carried the torch as a single municipality as we move these things. And I think that's good. we're going to have to watch that because I think our administration capacity is, is approaching max again for Because as we do these larger projects, we might, might want to ask the town that's not so flood prone to carry the torch for that for the grant administration if it is a single town to represent the large group. Um, more more I mean, they have the resources. <laughs> Are there any questions from the board on the update? This is just an update the pre applications due September, Eight, August 16th. August, August. Um, I did. I'm going to meet with Seth next week about uh, the possibility of adding the moving the relocation of the library as a pre application after the Department of Libraries grant all through. 
Uh, we might be able to build an alternative funding stack through this grant as well, but pay for the locations. So um, just kind of keep the door open moving forward and getting, again, getting out of the plane. And then <clears throat> not in here, but uh, something that was discussed was uh, modeling of the guy on. Um, one of the problems we had discussed about critical properties before, and one of the issues um, that I ran into, you guys made the approval, and then I met with Stephanie Smith um, at the end, and those properties had to be assigned by the engineer who was modeling study of this critical, right? And since the guy on is never modeled, you can't identify those critical properties. So I'm not going to be reaching out to the landowners who don't, um, don't have that engineering go ahead, right? Um, I think LCPC and or other local agencies will be reaching out to the top. I think common sense is that they are critical, but from the town's perspective, it's not wise to move forward. So I'm looking at other agencies to do that job. Um, I can, so the specific items that were on LCPC's list are, are not, I haven't seen this. You haven't seen this? No, I haven't. You should have gotten in the meeting on Thursday night. Right. It was it was like we had pizza. <laughs> uh, pizza to be more people here. Yeah, right. So on the on the list that, that came out of the HMGP LCPC meeting on Thursday night, Johnson related flood benches buy up property, flood benches are green, flood benches wolf con property, BSC, flood benches, farm properties. That's a very generic um concept uh scrivener bridge flood mitigation skate park i i suggested that the skate park is a relatively small portion of the total 10 acre parcel that the town owns there and that we should expand beyond mitigating the, the skate park to possible flood benches on you know the entire 10 acres look look at the entire 10 acres not just the skate park and I think Casey's plan, you want you drop your skate park down to 4,000 square feet, right? Like up closer towards the shed, or there's some model well, you consolidate it. Yeah, the, basically everything's pushed up close enough. Yeah, with the intent of yeah. doing just what you said. Yeah, so long yeah, and short of it is there's a, there's a lot of potential land there that could be lowered to accommodate flood. And historically, you guys will remember that. The 10 acres that the town got deeded got deeded because of a prior flood um, where they were anticipating elevating, you know, changing the, the multiple park elevating units. And that 10 acres used to be populated with mobile homes, but it's not. It's, 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 it's advantage. So that's, that's one that I would very much think should be. And then the other thing that came out of that meeting was LCPC was like the Main Street Bridge, the Hogback Bridge, and then Tony Lulier talked about the little bridge going under Footbrook on 15. Um, those are state assets. Uh, but what Seth was saying is we could put them on our list. He's not necessarily recommending that we do that, but he's what he is suggesting is we try and reach out to V Trans and say, hey, these are, you know, these are kind of critical infrastructure pieces that we really would like you guys to look at. You know, the hogback bridge for sure is one that you know, how many people have we heard say that creates a danger? Yeah, because there's more than there. Yeah. Um, so you know, could they put some bypass, you know, culverts in on that bridge? Uh, to help alleviate some of the problem, probably because you know there's space on either side of that bridge that you could potentially do that. So anyway, his suggestion was if we're not going to put it on, we should encourage VTrans to to get it going. To get it going. Yeah. So and if VTrans reached out to that about Main Street Bridge, and then I think Seth is now pushing for that as well. Is that correct? He said that bridge has an X on it. <laughs> And I said, that's great, but you know, uh, bang for buck, I think the high back is probably more important. Orange, uh, great bang. I guess, I guess, probably just. <laughs> 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 
Any further updates? I mean, that that was a really good one. I think what I think what Seth was also saying was that the board he he wants the board to take official action on those pre-application, you know, specific proposals. I we could take it at second meeting in July. They were listed right out. We could. You want, I don't you want to do, do that. I don't know how far you're gonna get blood benching farming land, but uh, you don't, but if we don't have it in as a placeholder. Yeah, it's you it's know, one of those free to take it back, but you can't add it later. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want it for July one? So there's six weeks to create the pre application letter, or do you want it for July 15th? So it's within month to do this letter. Would it be easier if you had six weeks? I think I think, I think it, the list is already here pretty much. I think I think July 1st we could easily have it right yeah. yeah. I don't that would be our first July, first meeting of July. Yeah. <clears throat> Thing LCPC from the flood model that I mentioned a month ago or so, maybe it was at one of those flood meetings. I had four key properties. Oh, can we get the work at Homes Meadow in for pre application? Even though we don't really know what dollar figure. That's already part of the existing mitigation grant. Yeah, it's it's already, I think engineering is already, there's already had two responses for engineering. There was, there was four locations. It was the Hogback Bridge, or the bridge by Hogback, Holmes Meadow, behind Manchester Mill. Yeah, yeah, there is a space and between the Road East and Manchester. That and small dog Manchester. leg in the river. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's just blood benchy. Mitigation, I guess, or big enough. Yeah, that's going to make it a little different, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I think there's a corner on past, like Kylie was there. At least if we're going out and going through there. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it on July 1, Tom, with a list. Of, I, I well, I don't know if the village is participating in any of this, but they own 10 acres where the well is, too, which is right on the river. If so, that could be. Benched or lowered to accommodate you know, some flood waters um, without it, you know without interfering with their wellhead or their pump extension. Right. So, can you see any advice that I don't know if they're going through the buyout, but I got a letter from them saying they're closing. That's right. Yeah, that I got that same letter too, which is. You know, I don't recall. Does anybody here recall that they bring in a lot of material to build that bank? Yes. 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 I was responsible for checking what went in. And they brought in a lot of bill over there. So uh, we wanted them to go to compact every hit, every six and two, and they compacted every three feet. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a lot of them. Another place that could be benched. Yeah. Your guys are still on that kick, aren't you? Not in that tonight. <laughs> um, are we ready to move on to the first step? Policy? Yeah. Tom, would you like to present to you? I can. Yeah. Excuse me. Can I add one thing on flood related stuff before? We How talk? dare you? What is it? Well, I think we all received a copy of a report from Stone Shore. Yeah. Um, are we going to have that on our first July meeting or do we want to talk about that? Maybe I missed it. I haven't read it. Did, I didn't read it either. But it was, I, I think, think we were in home saying that it was came in to the first this. Meeting about that. So, yeah, can we discuss it in July? I don't think there's any reason why we can. One of the questions I had, and maybe you could join in, is here for you to learn what it is. It doesn't make the reason. Yeah. There's still events over the library. Yeah. 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 This one says, I can send you the list. I get it every day. Um. <clears throat> What are the board's thoughts 
Union on a purchasing policy. Um, rules may be read. Purchasing part of that is in this comment. Nothing that you know, can we allow community members to buy things and get reimbursed or if they go somewhere that charges sales tax? Are you going to reimburse them for the sales tax or leave it out? Not reimburse the sales tax. Could you, um, could you repeat? Uh, sales tax on reimbursement. So I, I believe our question was if a, if a committee member goes and purchases something from a vendor of a sales tax, are we going to reimburse just the amount or they would plus sales tax? And you're saying that should be a policy? I think so. so I agree. Shouldn't be a question. Would those purchases be tax exempt if they were made by a town employee? Yes. So yes. Is there some documentation that we can provide to allow them to make tax exempt purchases on yes. our behalf? Yeah. They have to come in and I can issue them a a state sales tax form, but it's for that single vendor, it's right. not a general right. single single purchase. Yes. Plus three A. Well, so that, that's so that and leave it the way it is. Yeah, that sounds like an obvious thing to incorporate. And don't reimburse me for sales tax to go over that. They'll learn the correct way to do I mean, it. I yeah. I'm not sure if the board remembers, but Susan was in here making that specific question. Not the one. Lois, speak up. I don't have a question. I have a comment. Uh oh. But, but I've maintained for a, a long time that I, I'm perfectly happy to pay the sales tax just to get it so I can get reimbursed. You know, I made a trip somewhere, so I have to go back a second time. It's much cheaper just to pay the sales tax. So I don't see it as a penalty mark. I just see it as a convenience that I can process, pay something, and just ask to be reimbursed for the item tax. Are there any other uh, board comments on what was presented? I believe a uh, large portion, Tommy can correct me if I'm wrong, was the uh, CO. CO and then thresholds for triggers so what's an incidental purchase what's a purchase order and then what's a major purchase uh that would go before the select board and then what the paid required purchase uh that would go out today um obviously any major purchase that goes before the select board the select board has the authority to say go out to bed you know so that's so just because it's under that threshold we're going to need a back basically the government had done for three grand yeah, I just think, you know, you guys should agree, whatever you guys want, you know, and I, I'll change those. I just threw these numbers in based on, based on a quick conversation on the phone. I, I have no preference. That's that for what you should do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, future board's problem. Yeah. $1,000 you can buy it a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest that if we're gonna have a purchase order system, Personally, I'd rather see the number lower than five hundred dollars. So, as it's written right now, if it's five hundred dollars or less, you don't need a purchase order. I'd rather have that go to a hundred or less. You don't need a purchase order. And, you know, to me, the whole idea of doing purchase orders is, is a. It should actually make it easier to acquire something because most vendors actually ask you for a purchase order number when you do it and b it, it's just a good it's just a good practice to have you know do we want to have somebody um get a purchase order for 10 bucks worth of nuts and bolts at johnson hardware probably no but i just say 500 bucks is 500 bucks yeah or the rest of the board's thoughts on that. So you want to change that to zero to nine 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 or something? Ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents. Instead well, of hundred dollars, hundred dollars or less doesn't need to be Hundred and one. The way the way you've got it written is 
five hundred and one work requires that five hundred yeah. thousand. Yeah. So yeah. change change five hundred to one hundred in the hundred and one does that's what yeah, and that'll just reduce the next line from five oh one to one oh one. Right. But they still need to go to the town treasure town ministry. So even that three hundred dollar threshold still has the checks and balances. Right. And it's just not yeah. going to lower that. Exactly. It requires two signatures yep. with somebody who's not involved to ask questions. Yep. Yeah. And if you're going to go to a purchase order system, you've got Section 5 purchasing agents, the town administrator, public works, rep coordinator, tax clerk, library director. Does, do, does the rep coordinator really need to be in there for? You know, if you're going to do a purchase order and it's countersigned by two people, well, I guess they, I would actually argue that they should also. So, like, if I need to buy something, I have to do a purchase order and Rosemary has to sign it. So, there's always two signatures. In, and so, the rec coordinator does the purchase order, they sign it, and then Rosemary or I sign it. And I think we should probably put committee chairs too. So that way, Say Lois needs to get something to the conservation commission. She could do the purchase order, send me the email. Hey Tom, I need this. I send the email back. Go ahead, you're within budget. There's a purchase order ready to go. You can do the reimbursement or something. It's like, it's like how do we keep the checks and balances and increase efficiency? It's like you're kind of trying to do both at the same time. Getting back to you, uh, it had to be a couple. You don't get a whole lot sometimes. You can throw a proposal out there. You know, them. I mean, it's let, yeah, let, let's say they had to go down and get several hoses or something like that, good quality hoses to do a little, you know, water a lawn somewhere. You wouldn't want them to get down there and have it. You can only get one hose, one good hose, and then. Then go back and get another hole. Well, they can always have a purchase order number in their back pocket. If they if, if you think it's going to be more than hundred bucks, you know, I suppose it's going to be it all. Yeah. I mean, the idea of having a purchase order system is it's to keep track of accountability. Track. I understand. That. Um, so if you're, you know, it's like the, it's like the one, you know, what happened happened, right? And. The response was everything a thousand dollars or more took the board slowed things down and this is a way of keeping eyes on that but oh i get it between I meeting purchase yeah. and you said oh well i mean i i worked with the purchase order system for years i i'm agreeable i i immediately thought like you might and then i didn't say anything i think i hundred dollars i was going to offer a compromise on the side. 200 yeah but i think we can Stay at 100 and they can just add a purchase order with them. We'll see how it works out. I mean, my idea was to allow text messages or emails that I could print and fill out the purchase order so that way they're in real time. Hey, I'm at the store, I need this. And I'll say, yeah. What is it? What What's what's the budget line? And I can get back to them in five minutes, or Rosemary can get back to them in five minutes, text them back, and can print both text messages and there's and fill out the PO later. So that way you can like keep business going throughout the day too. Yeah. Well, I don't want Nick and I just yeah. move forward. We got a lot of other things to take care of. Bill Smith, do you have any other thoughts? Or... Well, if I'm gathering the temperature of the board, they would like this cleaned up a little bit, presented back. July. Like page three can go, obviously. That's just simple. Sorry, I'm gonna pull this up for a second. So I'm just reading the um the purchasing agent piece and section section five. Yeah, section five. And adding in the town committee chairs. Um I, I like the idea of it, but I, I worry that with um the under whatever the the number is um for B, it kind of makes it so that they can make expenses up to whatever that hundred or two hundred dollars is and then they will expect reimbursement from the town I, I would imagine for that um when we you know don't necessarily know 
what they're buying or, or what they're using it for. And so, I mean, it, it's, I think you have to trust at some point. You say, hey, you have a committee, you have a chair, you got to trust that what they're using it for. And then when the bills come in, I mean, somebody's putting them into the computer. Rosemary is going to be like, hey, Tom, check this out. And then I'll be like, well, that's what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Yeah. And some of these committees, like I think the army committee, they're spending their own money. Yeah. And I you know, yeah. a fair amount of these committees are spending their own stuff. See, this is difficult because I know that none of the people involved in our committees would do anything wrong. What I don't want to do is create a situation where someone can do something wrong and we're on the hook for it. That's that's my concern. But, but I, I think Shane that it wouldn't get reimbursed. If the documentation wasn't attached to what had submitted, yeah, okay, yeah, and yeah. that would yeah. also makes it easier to go through a bank, you know. So the so right right now, part of the reason people buy stuff out of their own pockets is it's right. like a pain in the ass to go through the purchasing process. Exactly. If you have a purchase order system, <clears throat> you can call up and say, "I want to buy X." Um, purchase order says, you know, purchase order gets issued. And, and you buy it in a vendor. You're going to put that down, Don? <clease> that makes it easier for people to buy things? No, no, what he just said. Did I say pin in the ass? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 sorry. I said ass. Oh, my gosh. What, <laughs> what do you got to say, Casey? So uh, what I, uh, a quick request is, since this does affect committee chairs as, as a change, that I didn't know that this was coming up, um, could you circulate the draft and then let us know? Yeah, we changed this guy. I mean, we just brought it up. Tonight. Yeah, and, and yeah. this is I, like I'm just reading it, and I'm kind of asking a question to figure out how adding new things into this this purchasing agent list would interact with it. I, you know, if if I if there are other checks and balances in place, then that's great. And I don't yeah, I don't need to add committee chairs, but oh. do we I, even need? Do we even need a purchasing agent? If you're going to a purchase order system, you need two signatures no matter what. What do you mean, no matter what? Well, you, if you order for so a, if we order didn't have a purchasing agent, right? I am chair of the Nelson Flight Board. And if any Johnson, anything that granted it's elected position, but if I went to Johnson Farming Garden for less than three dollars, I should be able to do it, right? Because well, it's anybody, gonna, but it's still gonna show up. On an invoice, so sure, you're, sure. you're going to get it. It's going to show up in the office as like on the statement, Johnson Farm and Garden. Rosemary is going to put it in Jason's box. Jason's going to be like, I didn't pay for this. So Jason's going to get say, Hey, Tom, I didn't pay for this. Figure it out. And I'm going to call every chair and say, Hey, Evan, what'd you buy for 98 bucks? Right. And you're what? going to say, uh, And it'll be like, so All right, saying, let's we, go to the select board. We have to figure out if you're the right person to be doing this. They're saying that it's paid for. Two or three hours worth of employees time because they don't have a but I guess if you don't want them, that's fine. What are you so calling? What's your definition of the purchasing? So I think at each department should have one person to review all purchases before it gets to Rosemary and myself. And like I think ultimately Rosemary should be the, the end all be all, but if she's not there, it should be me. You know, so that's why you always gotta have two, right? And I think if you have, when Rosemary sees a PO from the library director, whether Kristen bought it or not, it doesn't matter. But she knows, okay, that's who I called because she didn't put her signature on. Or say you're the skate park chair, you're the purchasing agent, and your employee had to buy something, you're going to put your signature on it, and then I'm going to get it in, I'll put my signature on it, there's two signatures. But a, per a real purchasing agent. Gets the like I was a purchaser for more spell water and light, and I would get a an order for ten thousand feet or four I triple AC. Okay, you don't know what I'm talking about, but I did. But I would go out to different vendors. I get the best price on the that, price. and then I would buy it. You see, that's a purchasing agent. That's what they do. So they they get all of the best deals. That they look for the best deals. You're just talking about a person that's gonna. Rubber stamps so, unauthorized yeah. first. Yeah, this is yeah, just I mean, like, oh, it's not, really a, not really a purchasing agent. The header is purchasing authority. There you go. Call oh, it a purchasing purchasing authority. authority. Yeah, not an agent. You're busy with the venture. 
Um, yeah. So, what are the board's thoughts on committee chairs? Or do you just can't take them to try to bond? I like the idea of giving them purchasing ability. I I don't know if you know it, it fits with the current language, but I, that it might just be something that it can be tinkered. Okay. Well, again, I think the concept really is Mike is right. It's it's authorized person, and it's not a you're you're absolutely right about your come out like person purchasing agent. I'm okay with the idea of the chair or a dedicated person. Okay. That's fine with them. All right. I'm like Dr. I just know from the other that somebody goes here, somebody goes there, it's not necessarily the chair. Yeah. Well, well, that's okay, but somebody, so like in that case, they have four different people buying the chair will sign right. off on it. That's right. Then Rosemary calls Jasmine and says, Hey, Jasmine, I have four receipts to reimburse. Which one? XYZ, so, okay. Now, with, that's how that person is responsible for it, not the actual doing, so, but just the approval of the action. So you yes. have a little bit of reword wording there. Right. What, what word do you want instead of agent? Authorized person, authorized person, person authority. Authority. Um, authorized approvers. Sure. Doesn't make it difference. Uh, Just don't call them a purchasing. Uh, I don't care what that's called. The PO uh, amounts will be less. And then can you work on some proposed wording about the refund reimbursement? Reimbursement's not being. Not reimbursing for tax. Yeah. And then maybe uh I, you guys I, would know the wording way better, but maybe if there's a small section that just kind of said if you need a one time uh tax certificate, please yeah. see the town treasurer or assistant town treasurer. I did this and one to where it spells out, it's clear, it's like you know, it, it is encouraged to use existing town vendors. If you have a new vendor, it's your responsibility to go to the center and get the tax exam or mystery and have that was very yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we're good. Ready to see this again in July. And if it's all those changes are made, I think for is it Amazon, one of our <laughs> we're tax exempt there. Well, we're tax exempt on Amazon. Indeed, we are tax exempt yes. We're gonna get our friends my there account. in two days. Is Amazon's smile still a thing? Did they oh, shut that they down? Do. They shut that down. All right. I do. Okay, where are we at? I do believe that there's an update on the rec director job description. Uh, the short version of the update is that there is not completed language for the new uh, the new job description. We had our first um, community listening session last Wednesday, and we have another one planned for this Wednesday. We wanted to make sure that we had two so that people who couldn't get there the first time would have another opportunity. Um, we got a lot of really good feedback at the first one. Um, I think one of the, the main things that we heard from folks was that there was a feeling that 24 hours a week is not enough to do all of the work that is needed in uh, the recreation job. Um, and especially with some of the other uh, you know, physical maintenance requirements that are required, that ends up eating a lot of the, the 24 hours up and then other stuff ends up falling by the wayside. Um, there is a broader conversation that needs to be had about uh, committee engagement and what role the committee is going to play. Um, something that I found out as, you know, the course of this, over the course of this is that there have not been regular committee reports given to the recreation committee over the last few years. So committee members are sort of in the dark unless they're able to, you know, do digging themselves about where money is being spent and, uh, you know, when purchases are being made and whether they are or not. Um, so there's a little bit of, of uh, yeah, maybe some, some clarification in the, uh, language that needs to happen about how the recreation coordinator is supposed to interact with the committee and who has those roles. Um, yeah, was there anything I'm missing? Um, um, can I talk about the idea? Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of something that actually Tom and I both had as like a mutual brainchild at, at the same time um, was the idea of pursuing an interlocal solution to this. Um, 
I have heard that Hyde Park is having a conversation of whether they want a rec director right now. Um, Cambridge being where they're at, having just had a very, very close vote on the community center um, and you know, really having some interest in this as a, as a conversation. Um, I think it might be possible for us to send this a little bit wider and, and possibly get other towns buy in on it. Um, Especially considering a lot of those other towns are already coming here for recreation. But if, yeah, then you can justify the 48 hours because it's now being split. Yeah, it might actually come with the cost savings. But the long and short of it is that we're going to have another listening session next week. Um, and I'm going to come back with a job description that it's this 24 hours. Uh, and then we can decide what we want to do with it. Okay. Was it well attended? It was fairly well attended. I mean, there was, I think, eight people there, well, which, you know, for a Wednesday night meeting, that was well, kind of like really big area. Yeah. I mean, like, how many people we got here? Um, and, uh, you know, what was what I thought was really powerful was there was someone who was there who had driven all the way there from Globe because her children are in recreation programs and she was that passionate about the things that she wants to see in the next recreation coordinator that she she came all this way to, to tell us about it and and that kind of goes into what we were saying about the you know, local pieces there are a lot of towns around here that do not have recreational programming and i don't know if this is a way that's actually going to get them to buy in but if we are able to say hey you know we want to hire this for everyone in the area and it's going to get you these kinds of guarantees for your kids in recreational programming. They might be willing to chip in a little bit. So you're going to have to have a real clever person manage all those things. I think one thing to do is uh, the school, and I don't know if we elaborate on this, but the idea that elsewhere schools run recreation and it happens to pay the school systems. And so maybe it's worth um, conversations with one or more with, I mean, it would, it would, we pay for it on our school side of our taxes, but I don't think we're going to save any money, but it means it would be coordinated through the supervisory union as opposed to being coordinated at a town level. So it's still regional, still the same idea, the same problem as well. It's just who, who coordinates it, the superintendent or the, the various towns. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? But it solves the problem. And that was something else that we heard a lot is, and it's, it's impossible to work this into a job description, but people want it to be someone who is connected with the schools and, you know, the, the, the advantages there are pretty good. So, uh, that is, that is something that we should be considering. Thank you for the update. Uh, so we'll have another one. Yeah, and there, there will be we do the first for the yeah. days. So we should be pretty busy meeting. Yeah, but it'll be the meeting. Um but there will be an updated draft of the uh uh job training before Okay. Uh real real quick temperature check. Are any board members opposed to an interface bowl with another town? I'm personally a dog, but yeah, sure. We can save money and I'm all for it. Okay. I think we can save money and significantly improve recreational Good. programming. Okay. Are you are open to the concept? I'm open to the concept, but I just don't see the mechanic we have. I mean, are you thinking that this would be something we'd work into our budgets for next year? Yeah, I, I mean, it's not something that you know we're going to figure out it's the not next couple of weeks. A response to the, uh, right. the yeah, right. yeah, if you would look at an interim to get to like June, January 1st, yeah. back at this, this, I, I think. You know the, the position we're in I, it certainly made me realize that there needs to be a broader conversation around recreation in our community and that there are a lot of folks involved with recreation who have felt like they are an afterthought from this board and that if we value recreation and i certainly do we we need to change that um, this is a time for us to have that conversation what we want it to look like and, and how we can make that happen if it takes us a couple years to get there, you know, it, we, like, what we, we have yeah. now some of the best we have, you know, we'll know part of the next facility, but like maybe, you know, this is part of that conversation of like, if all these towns are paying for it, maybe we pay a different sub to handle that field, but we have somebody else to do less good, probably weekly. 
you know, it's, we heard a lot of, you know, like how do we how do we make the facilities we have usable with, our, with the current town contract it's not working? That is the other thing that is not totally related to uh, the job description, but um, is that my understanding is Robert and Sons is supposed to be mowing the Old Mill Park regularly, and it has not been very consistent. And they don't, right? And they took their first So I don't know okay. how we. Yeah. What are the <laughs> Robert and Sons double their. I don't know if they were built, but they, they brought it close. 91 to 18. Okay. Okay. Close to August. There you go. I have one question. Is this strictly a direct coordinator? So, yes, the, the, the short answer is yes. Um, there, in the previous job description, there was some talk about non use programming. Um, the truth is that it didn't happen. And, and Within 24 hours, if we're already running up against time constraints, no, I, 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 totally it, understand. I, I don't know how any of that extra stuff would it, be. It's some brought point in the larger picture. I There was one that I want to watch it for. Okay. Uh, I think we're getting a little bit off topic. And, okay. Well, I want to do a slight little bit. Okay. Uh, but thank you for the update. Uh, the next. Item is uh, kind of work dates, but a public works crew. I believe that the union has presented proposed language as a uh, appendix to the contract. There may be an amendment. Memorandum of agreement. What are the board's thoughts on the language? Just so they can have Friday. Uh, it's so they can work more tents. Uh, wrong. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Maybe that's how you read it, but it's, it's for the first pay period of May 2024. We're a little bit past that. The last pay period in October. I will offer thought on bullet point number four. It says all holidays that fall within this period shall be paid out at 10 hours at the applicable wage rate. I do not think that is fair as a practice. If, if all of our employees are getting eight hours paid on a holiday, they can work to 11s or they can come in for two hours on a separate day uh i personally am not in support of 10 hours but i'm just on board now well, i'm really not keen on the idea of bullet point number three which is over time should be paid <clears throat> after 10 hours of each day monday through friday all hours on friday and any hours over 40. right now they're working eight hour days, five days a week. So we have full coverage for Friday. If if we're gonna do something, I, I'm totally in favor of 10 hours, a 10 hour day, I think the crews can get set up, they can work longer days and they can get more done in a 10 hour day than we can leave. I'm just really and you know they're getting a you know they're getting a four day work week. My as far as the Friday coverage point, I did talk with Jason earlier. He is planning, he's not part of the union, but he is planning to work five days for the rest of the summer. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that changes your mind or not. I'm just relaying information that I got. Well, if we're assuming Jason can handle everything that comes up on Friday alone, then I continue with your conversation. I just wanted to tell you what I heard. Yeah, um, that that could potentially help. Although, what are they going to do with two hours of the day that he's not working? They're going to be out there without him. I mean, he, 
if they're doing ditching, they'll continue ditching. I wasn't overly concerned when I heard it, but uh, do they need a foreman like on site when they're or on the clock, I guess, when they're working or no. <laughs> Uh, I'm, so, I'm sure they're very good. Yeah, I, I guess I was asking for like legal reasons. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I, you know, you, Evan had mentioned the idea of, so the way this is structured is, is Monday through Thursday and the pay period, Rosemary, is the pay period end Wednesday? Okay, if we did it based on a pay period and somebody had to work on Friday, then they could take a, you know, they could take Monday off. So, you know, you have or to- Or Tuesday. Or Tuesday. You know, you could have flexibility if you did it based on a pay period rather than a workday week, which right now is described as very clearly Monday through Thursday. Can we change the workday week so that it matches all reporting for state and federal grants? If you would like, Proposed language to go to the union, bring it to the board. We'll probably run a higher lawyer. This is something the union wants, right? This is something this is, this came from the union. Yeah. You say that again to two people. This came from the union now. Okay. I, I have not. So this it. this is something that they want. Yeah. So we. What are they going to trade? This is a union. This is collective bargaining. If, yeah. if a union member wants something, they have to trade. They have there has to be some equitable compensation for the company, which is us. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what are, what do they want to give up? Um the typical yeah. negotiations is you quit. You're absolutely fast forward, you don't say a word, you walk away. Well, I get it. I and so I think right now this is their absolute fast forward. And I think we need to come with our absolute best back with the trading. So we don't we don't need that our day to continue on the way we're doing this. That's the way they were hired. That's the way we can stay. Uh, does the rest of the board share that sentiment or what they think I'm that? open to 10 hour days with the changes that um, both of you have brought up. I'm kind of with, with Mike on that in terms of I I the only caveat I would have is that we could we could say you've got we have a contract right now which requires that you work by day or next. If you want something other than that, this you know, this overtime on Friday is an on starter make a make a proposal. Mark, what are you willing to give up? I um one of you know using dark and bright, which I get heartburn over any amount of time during the course of an eight hour day to work over eight hours. I always want to work over 40. So my you know, maybe we should be in a bigger session about this. I don't know. You might want to do some trading, but that has always been a little bit odd pill, but I don't know, and maybe Rosemary or somebody else can tell me, is there a lot of little half hour every day overtimes? That have not in the summertime, no. Not in the summer, but more in the winter. Majority of their overtime is in the winter. Well, getting back to Duncan's point, you know, I mean, that, that time and a half over 10 hours, it's hard, and time and a half over eight hours is just not and that may be just what I'm used to. I'm used to you work 40 hours. If you work 43 hours, you get over. You get three hours of overtime. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you, but you know, that has always been a big problem, what you're talking oh. about, eight hours over, you know, in a day. But, but you, you're expected to work 40 hours, and there's no reason why you're not going to work 40 hours, because the bosses are going to tell you on Friday, you know, you work a couple hours overtime, you're going to get two hours off early on Friday, and it's going to be a wash. Nobody does that. So um, Mark did make a comment, and we are getting relatively far down the track. So 
Could I recommend the board delegate two board members to work on this and come back on July 1st with them? Why? I'm just trying to like, why do them. we need to do that? It, this is their proposal. What, what are they going to give us? What, what do they want to do? We're opening a contract. We have a contract that is signed. And so this is a chain to a contract. So really, if, it, if you do a change to a contract, you could technically open up the whole contract. I think that's why they're calling it a contract. I think it's. I think that's a clever way to get around what Link is talking about. Yeah. I think they're talking about specifically amending section nine point one so and nine point two. There's a good declaratory question. When I was shop steward, I'd do the same thing. Uh, but I'm not a shop steward. Either. There's no motions to approve this. Is there going to be one? Not by me. Okay. I, I think we should, you know, consider that this is going to be a request in the next contract negotiations. But you know. I believe that I was in the original contract negotiations and we tried to do this and they refused. They refused to do it. And there's actually language in the current contract that says that the select board may go may change the hours and etc and you know so it, there's there's language in there that would allow the board to do it but this request will come from the employee right off the board right and, and and to mike's point this is obviously very favorable to the yeah of course it is. Well, i guess um you can inform the union that the select board offers not all of this contract. Um, we don't want to open up the contract. We don't want to. Uh, does the select board not want to open up the union contract? One member says no. It's probably better to just wait until we reach which is which is when yeah. it's a three year contract. It started in 2023. Uh, January 1, 2023. So we're two and a half year or a year and a half through it, which will start union negotiations probably six months ahead of time. We're going to be opening, discussing opening the contract a year, okay. give or take. Personally, I'd be willing to entertain another proposal that addresses the issue of. No, no employee coverage on Friday. Okay, I would be as well. And uh, so if that's the temperature of the board, I believe we could, because that's what I'm not too. Sorry. Uh, I also tend to agree that your holiday piece is the important piece. Yeah. Um. So the changes. You would entertain a new proposal, and I would. Refer them to our with the Friday coverage piece. No uh, coverage on Fridays and overtime after 10 or at 40. So only overtime after 10. If you make this proposal, then it's something that we're agreeing on. And then no, no, they need to submit an proposal. I mean, okay. they can watch the I'm meeting. willing to I'm willing to review something. I, I think the onus is on them to come back to us with a proposal to address. Okay. Because you want me okay. so not not for us to come up with a proposal. Okay. You want me to remove overtime after ten no, hours? No, no, no. We're not we going to. We don't want you to do a single thing, Tom, other than tell them this was not accepted. These are the concerns that they had. The select what had. They'll entertain a proposal. If you, the union, what are those? The That's what I'm trying to write down. For the overtime piece, well, overtime over forty, right? Overtime. Well, I overtime about five. Days. Yeah, the way the way it's currently written, overtime shall be paid after ten hours each day, all hours on Friday. That's the part that gives me it. all hours on Friday. And so they, they want to get ten. Day. They want to get start. ten hours on holiday. In that too.
basically yeah we are now well it, this is this is a clever way you know calling this a memorandum of understanding yeah it's not this is an amendment to the contract that's right and, and Mike is absolutely right I believe a lot of companies wouldn't even entertain it yeah. wouldn't even give it a thought no this is our deal for three years yeah this is what we're sticking to <laughs> unless you want to trade us something that we feel is advantageous to the company yeah and that that proposal is, is not well. it's, it's all right. one-sided <clears throat> which we could only expect oh yeah the initial offer of course and sometimes I wonder if this should have been even in executive session. I struggled with that one too, but we're not negotiating contract. We're um, possibly amending a contract. Probably should have been in. It's it's on the hairy edge. Yeah, whatever. But I, I don't I don't have a problem at all. Anybody listening to what I have to say? Um. So our next item, the labor good. RFP for townwide reappraisal. I believe the whole board received it. Yep. The, the, the RFP. Move to approve. We we'll get our letter to the state saying we needed to reappraise today. You got it today. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect time. <laughs> so there's a motion to approve the. Now, wait just a minute. This is not going to take place until 2028. We don't know. We need to have some kind of a, an, an avenue, but let's say some new company comes up and it, they start out and say, we can do it for you next year. If we approve well, it, we're locked into this deal. If well, we approve an RFP, we're locked into accepting prices. No, this is right, a, right, right, this okay. a request for proposals. All right, well, I thought you were going to do a deal with the other outfit. No, this is get, get in with them. just secret. <laughs> I no, I I love it if, if, if another company comes along and says we can do it next year. We can't wait for twenty to come. We need to have Justin put something in there. I guess it would be with the contract negotiation. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, motion and a second. Further discussion on the RFP. Hold on. No. Okay. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. The eyes have it. Duncan, I do believe that you have a brief update brief on the revolving loan fund. I do. Um, part of part of this we're going to discuss an executive session that would involve the current client privilege. Um, the part that I would want to do an open session regards uh, conversation demand on our head to Vermont community development program who were the under underwriting entity for the original service market which ended up being how we got the revolving loan funds um, so i would say we had a fairly positive conversation with the folks at ECDP. subsequent to that they sent um, randall a, a email asking very specific questions about using the revolving loan fund they referred to it as a highly unusual request which I'm not sure that it is. Um, but the sticking point for me was they said they wanted the board to submit a letter of request to be approved by BCDP in order to be able to use the funds from the And at that point, I said, I need further clarification. Of what, you know, do you have approval authority? Does the board have approval authority? And they should allow us. I think I've got it as far as I can bring it. If you guys want to just drop it, that's fine. You want to push it. Then I feel I would need further authorization from you to seek additional information. That's the piece of looking for feedback from you guys. And don't forget, we, we have the attorney opinion that needs to be discussed in the yeah. session. So, so we should make it. So, okay, maybe, maybe we should wait until I have yeah. to hear what we've heard. Okay. Thank you for the update. Uh, there may be motion coming out of item 18. 
com dog update policy update. Um, so first is this weekend, Dean got a call um, about a dog. I believe it's the same dog that has been in question, um, I believe. And um, it would actually turn into an animal cruelty case and the dog was seized by the sheriff. The sheriff then called Dean and um, our animal control officer and Dean brought the dog to um, the kennel in Morrisville um, that we're starting to build this agreement with. And um, there's a whole lot of unknowns about who's responsible. Is it the town um, or is it the sheriff? Because the sheriff sees the dog and not the town. The town did not pick up a dog at large. So we don't really have a lot of statutory clarity, if you will, because you can only pick up stray dogs. And this dog was, he was called by the sheriff and today. It was up till midnight, actually, Saturday night, um, kind of dealing with this issue. And, you know, he felt he didn't really know what to do or how to say no to the sheriff and say, let me take get this dog. I think I probably would take the dog too. So um, there's some still some information. This is really just an update, but there's some information that needs to be had about um, how long we have to hold the dog while the investigation is happening, if the town being responsible to hold the dog, because um, it would not fall under our policy. Um, and so uh, this just came to light today, but we need to know that decisions might have to be made between the next two weeks on this matter about how to handle this process. And I'm just going to, Dean has been reaching out to BLCT for guidance and uh, local humane society is trying to find uh, what he can do, but he's under the understanding that he does, he can't even give the dog away to the humane society while it's under investigation by the sheriff's office. Earlier last or, or last week, I spoke with the sheriff about this same issue, kind of bringing clarity of what is defined as what the sheriff is responsible for versus what the ACL is responsible for. And in that hour-long conversation, the one gray area managed to pop up over the weekend. Um, so I think this will be a continued conversation with the sheriff's department, BLCT, um, and our ACO is as far as what happens in these scenarios if this, this hasn't happened yet. Um, so, so it actually has happened. What is what was the outcome then? There is specific language in our contract with the sheriff's department. We're gonna have go through charges. Look at the contract. Yeah, we we got a language added. Well, I don't know if it's still in there, maybe it's not in there anymore. Um, but we added specific language regarding the sheriff's role in animal cruelty investigations and charges because this issue came up years ago uh, where the sheriff picked up an animal. Uh, well, they they actually did the same thing. They wanted the animal control officer to take possession of the dog. And the animal control officer at the time was taking mad at that, and he said, no, I'm not going to do that. If it's an animal control, animal cruelty issue, which you are called on and you're investigating it, then it's up to you to take the dog into their, your possession and deal with it. I think that was right. And it's been met. That's how I read it. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of hard to do at midnight, you know, for me. I really uh, that sure that they are putting a lot of pressure. On. Yeah, that's a tough role to be in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, all of this is thanks to our illustrious legislature who adopted the Animal Control, the Animal Cruelty um, Act a number of years ago, uh, which, which made the Animal Control Officer a local sheriff, local law enforcement official, uh, and or the humane agency in the area potentially subject to investigating animal cruelty complaints. Uh, so it set up a real mess between the municipalities and the law enforcement agencies as to who was going to impound it up and who was going to be responsible for his care and cost when it was in, you know, in, exactly. in their possession. Yeah. And probably they were thinking about more than dogs. Oh, yeah, horses, cattle, everything. There we go. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you know, our animal control officer actually has no jurisdiction on the cows and horses. We had we had people trying to get uh you know, we had people trying to get a, uh, our animal control officer to investigate a complaint about uh, a horse. And you know, there's no jurisdiction. Is that the full update that you have? And you have a place to go check the contract, right? Wow. Sheriff's contract, yes. And then out of that, because the oh. team brought this to the kennel in Morrisville, that we don't have an agreement with, yeah. we have a half created, unapproved interlocal agreement been drafted, and now it's getting pushed quickly. And so that's where the next part is. But if we talk about, we need to, we have a dog that nobody knows she's going to pay for in a kennel that's expecting to get paid $25 a day. You don't even have, you know, something like we got to, we got to move, you know, and, and I think um, if we could either A, delegate some board members to talk about this to prepare for the next meeting, just get it signed and get it going. Do you, I believe, if you were the liaison, so has anybody communicated with you? No. It's just, okay. I got text messages today. Like it's just like fell out of the air because so, we had a problem. So I, I showed up to the office today and, and Tom and I had a conversation about this. And that was the first time that I had yeah. that there was drafted language here. My my thought on the agreement is that we definitely need to have time to look at it. And some of what I saw, I immediately had heartburn about. So, you know, it's a lot of heartburn. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so it may need, you yeah, know, yeah, it thing. may need like a back and forth for us to find the that, that works for us. Um, yeah. Yeah. As it pertains to the, the ongoing dog issue, I think we need to figure out how we clarify that this is, is in fact well, the sheriff's. It's, <laughs> it's very clearly in the sheriff's court. It's not our item to deal with. Yeah. Not that it doesn't take. But and when you get an interlocal agreement forwarded on to the board, the stuff we have time to review it, I guess. But we'll act on anything tonight. Yeah, I mean, I don't think. No, but it, it very much raises the issue of you know one of my concerns was what are we going to do if we pick up a dog? We don't have any place to put it. I was gonna, I was going to say earlier, it seems like there's a board room that's been asking about this for five months. But <laughs> there is a draft. I think if the board was willing to delegate one or two board members to work on this, similar to the interlocal, if nothing did, I think we could probably clean this up and get it. I've been having a lot of conversations tonight with the APM with Hyde Park, who helped create this, and the Hyde Park town kind of administrator. That by the July 1st meeting, we could probably even have some of this, or at least seriously consider to either agree or not agree, but at least skip to detail that. You know, so we're not hashing it out again, right? If this if somebody would be willing to work with me to get it get it done. Right. I'm willing. Uh let's say second meeting in July instead of the first one. And those are the previous board that four of us are still here, but Shane is already yeah, if you're willing to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. argument? If you well, want to, I'm happy to weigh in. Yeah, I mean um, but real quick, it's all done except here the issues. Is Hyde Park is leasing a facility, um, and then they're looking for six towns to help with the cost of that facility, and then we have to pay the additional daily rate. I'm asking for, I want to know all the towns that are in it and have them all sign the same documents similar to the interlocal. And I'm asking that we have all the finances transparent, it's similar to the interlocal assessor, that whether it's a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper, but we all know how much each town is paying. Right, I just think government is transparent. We should all know that. Matters. And I think once that's done, I think it's clean. All right, you can forward that on the board, I guess. Um, any further updates on that? If none, I would entertain a uh, motion to enter into executive session. Is there something else? Oh. Uh, I asked, it was earlier with the ledger license, um, I asked for a suggested motion. Would the board consider a motion to have Rosemary approve all catering liquor license 
all renewal liquor license and all one day liquor licenses and trust their judgment to come to the board, but all new liquor licenses would come to the board. I I think it's very late in the meeting, but that's a very good question to have on the agenda. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Is the board okay with that? I think at this point, all licenses have been renewed. Assist the one time licenses. Yes. Yeah. Okay. At this point, yeah. Thank you. So we go for that. Yeah, I, I guess the, the, the caveat would be um, does the board have the authority to, to do that? To do that. To approve the all theater? No, to authorize one person to to issue or approve licenses. Or does it is it required that it's an action for I, I don't know the answer. There are some towns that have done that. I was going to allow say, the town clerk to do that, uh, especially okay. the catering ones. Come, if it's if it's if it's you use it like the way it is. Okay. It doesn't like anything past midnight. Right. Well, it's but but we're right. talking the rules. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, catering the way they have it. The question the question was about standard. So there's okay. Weird one. Um, yes, we do have weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're crossing. Can we enter all three executive sessions? That's the I was just about to try. We have to enter and exit. I don't. I have never felt that there was any prohibition to having one executive session and identify each of the items that we're going to talk not come out and go back. Come out, go back. Would you be willing to formulate a motion? Uh, I would. I would move that we enter into the executive session for three specific items. The first one being an employee evaluation under 1 BSA 313A3. The second being an executive session for pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body may be a party under one BSA future. That would be the correct. A one E. And the third one, an executive session for confidence and attorney client communication paid for the purpose of providing professional legal fairnesses to the body under one BSA 313A one F. Cool. Second. Motion a second. Further discussion. I would like to state that there may be a potential action coming up. But I can send that at the top ten. Right. My, I guess my motion should have been uh, inviting uh, Tom. Why not? Thank you, Rosemary. And it's friendly to me. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, board entered executive session at 928.